Ladies and gentlemen, we are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. For those in the chat, welcome. Early bird gets the worm. That means you get salvation. Everyone else is going to burn and cook because that's a fact. As you know, that's a fact. I do want to go ahead and debunk the myths in the chat right now. We got to come out guns blazing. I do create my own thumbnails in case you're wondering. I create my own thumbnails. How about that? Isn't that interesting? Hmm. It's impressive. It's I know. And I, it's like walking on water here. But, you know, uh, Derek is dumb. Uh, no, I like dumb. Okay. Which means I'm actually smart. And so everybody who's tuning in, you know, can see that I make my own thumbnails. I just, you know, there's some people you got to just show them facts. But will they believe if you show them the evidence? Will they believe? Now, I wanted to do this episode because a couple things have happened just in the past 24 hours that have kind of piqued my curiosity. And I said, I really feel like I need to vocalize this. And I want to say up front that I had a text message from a family member that came in a month or two ago, and they had just got out of church. And there's like 12 of my family members who were in this group chat. And it was like praising Jesus, thanking Jesus and really just giving like a, a thank you, Jesus. We're so glad you love us type of thing. And I was like, oh, don't be the pessimist. Don't be the pessimist. But I felt like I needed to at least respond in some way politely. And I said, is it okay that I, that I wrote back, you know, that I write back to you all and say that I don't agree with the statements and, and the faith, if you will. And they all got their panties in a bunch and got really worked up. And I was like, that's pretty sad. I'm like the only one who isn't a Christian and who isn't saying, you know, Jesus saved us and thank you, Jesus, you love us and all that kind of stuff. And I, I had a talk with my mom and my sister and others. And I said, I, I want to have this conversation when I move to Washington here soon with all the family. And I said, how would you feel if I were writing like, I'm so glad that Krishna cares for us or I believe in Zeus or whatever God it might be. And I'm so glad that this God is looking out for us and cares for us and whatnot. You, because you're a Christian, would automatically be offended by that kind of uh, proposition or that kind of faith. And I said, it, it kind of feels bad because what if I said what I actually think about it? Would you all be accepting and like, yeah, amen. Or thank you, Derek. We appreciate your thought. No, I'm now like kind of in a weird way, ostracized in terms of what I believe in wanting to bring that out. So it felt like a little uncomfortable because I love my parents. I love my family and I'm not here to upset them, but it's like, we're supposed to just like bend over and take it and allow that to happen and never be the people who can at least voice their opinion without everyone else getting hurt or upset and then taking offense to it. So I wanted to just make this clear. Um, a lot of times apologetics and apologists, they start with a proposition that they're right. And even my mom, who's not an apologist, but believes in Christianity has told me when I told her, mom, I don't believe. And she's like, well, what would it take? You know? And I'm like, I would need to know, I'd need better data, net better evidence. My epistemic value on what is truth is higher. And I res I expect more, especially when you have like major claims. I expect better evidence. And mom told me, well, God told me that Derek, he's going to reveal himself to you at some point. Like, remember, I'm always wrong. No matter what, the believer can never be wrong in their position. At least the, the apologist who's defending their faith. So they're already right no matter what. And they're going to sell it to you or force it down your throat or make you walk away no matter what, realizing that no matter what position you take, no matter what happens, you're wrong. And I am tired of hearing that. I'm tired of being the one who's saying, well, you know what, uh, what about this or what about that? And they have this position that they're coming from. So I want to point out where I think this stems from. And it does go right back to the sources. It goes right back to the New Testament. It goes right back to the Quran. And we're going to play a few clips of that. Um, I do see a couple of my friends that are in the chat below. We will bring you on in just a second. 
Let me get the, the ball rolling here. If you don't mind, Neil and Derek Bennett, that is right. Thank you for everybody tuning in. Like I said, you're going to heaven. I promise you, no matter what you believe, because, well, you're here. Derek is not allowed to question Christ. <sighs> that is kind of what I do, isn't it? It is what I do. I, I question various things. I question all of them. I really appreciate that super chat. One Kings 18 apologetic. Show me the miracles, right? Seriously, uh, the fact that I exist, right? No, thank you for that super chat. Friendly Muslim, you were in the chat last night. I'm going to be bringing up, going to be bringing up a little bit that was brought up last night with our Muslim friends and how someone that's not a believer, the goal, I hope non-believers don't make it their goal to like try to apologist the opposite direction, right? I think uh, we should help everyone try to be more progressive in a way and steer away from bad ideas as a collective uh, humanity here and not like do things that we'd say is outdated. Like looking at the Old Testament, I wouldn't want to live according to the Old Testament. I hope that most people don't want that for our society. I would say the same thing about Islam in, in the 600s. I would say maybe there's some things we shouldn't practice that are outdated. Uh, we've learned a lot since then. You know, those are good common practices I hope that we would learn from. Now, let me point out a few of these texts. I want to start with the New Testament because it precedes the Quran by hundreds and hundreds of years. I know that nothing I'm saying is going to matter to a devout Muslim who's 100% convinced that Islam is the truth. And to a Christian, who am I, you know? Uh, I, I entertain mythicism forever, so I'm not to be listened to, right? There's always some type of excuse to not listen to someone like me uh, if you're within that bubble of faith. I get it. Now, let me share my screen. Uh, I already showed you the evidence that I create my own thumbnails. Now we're going to something else. <laughs> Here we go. We got the Patreon. Patreon. Uh Look, Neil's flexing the, in the background. I'm going to bring you on, Neil. Don't worry. He's flexing the Quran. He's flexing something else. All right. This is the one about uh, Lazarus and the rich man. We will come to you, my friend. We will come to you. All right. So in Mark, the earliest gospel about Jesus, Mark chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. I just want to say a scholar named William Rede. I've been calling him Reed recently, but I was corrected by James Tabor. It's Rede. And this scholar wrote about the secret Messiah in Mark. And he's written extensively how Jesus doesn't want people to know his true identity. And even when he tells hints of it, they don't get it. Even when Peter says, you are the son of God or you are the Messiah, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter, my father in heaven. And even Peter still does not get it, even though he says it. By the way, the course that I just recorded with him hasn't been edited yet. James Tabor's course on Mark, we go through the whole gospel of Mark, and I've never learned more about the gospel of Mark than in that course. So anyway, that'll be coming at some point in the next month or two. In Mark, look what he says. He told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven or repent and be forgiven. Jesus actually is not wanting people to know the truth and repent and be forgiven. Jesus himself does not want everyone to be saved. It's very clear in the Gospel of Mark. Now, you can run the 2 Peter 3 apologist. You can go and run there and say, well, uh, because the, the parousia fell and this forged letter of Second Peter is trying to compensate for why Jesus hasn't come back yet. So they say, you know, God's long suffering. He, he want, he's wanting to get everybody saved. This is not what Jesus wants here in the gospel of Mark. So there's a contradiction of voices here on what's trying to take place. And in Matthew, he even says a special prayer. I don't know if I pulled that pericope up. I did not, where he says, I thank you, Father, that you did not reveal these things to them, but you have revealed them to babes. Now he's talking about those, his apostles. Because in Matthew, the dim-witted disciples aren't so dim-witted. See, in Mark, they can't get jack diddly squat. In Matthew, they get it. Oh, Jesus reveals things. 
Um, they they hear it, they see it. One of the clever things in in the very baptism in Mark, God speaks, and you picture this like everyone's standing around the river, and there's Jesus gets dunked underwater, and all of a sudden, this voice from heaven screams, "Hey, this is my son, in whom I'm well pleased." That's in Matthew. Look carefully at Mark. This is a, a interesting. Let me let me go to Mark chapter one here. I'm gonna show you how special this is. All right, Jesus announces, calls us first. Da, 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 da. Nope, it's up here at the top. Okay, he ate wild honey, and this was his message. After he come, one more powerful than I. Straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to soup down. Yada yada yada. Uh, give you. Let me see something here. I think Neil, what what did you do? Oh, uh, you, you you messing with something here? Hold on. Okay. All right. Neil, Neil's Neil's over here messing with stuff because Neil has power. See, he has power from heaven. I've I've given it to him. I've given him the power. Um, here we go. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. All right. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. And what does it say? As Dr. Tabor points out in the course, you, he's talking to Jesus. He's not talking to everybody. You are my son whom I love with you and I am well pleased. God's talking to Jesus. He's not talking to everybody. If he did, everyone would have known who he was. It's only to Jesus. Then in Matthew, oh, everybody starts to find out. Matthew and Luke and John, and they make him freaking so hardcore that at his death, he's not, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's like, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Like Jesus has super saying abilities by the time you get to Luke and John. But anyway, I just want to point out some of these things. The Pharisees went to Jesus and began to argue with him. They tested him by demanding that he perform a miracle or miraculous signs or sign from heaven. With a deep sigh, he asked, why do these people demand a sign? I can guarantee this truth. If these people are given a sign, it will be far different than what they want. Then he left them there. And then in Matthew, there's, there's another spot, Mark, where he says, listen, no sign will be given to them. They are not going to get a sign. And then in Matthew, it says, no sign will be given to them, dot, 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 but the sign of Jonah. They'll get that. They'll get the sign of Jonah. That's added in Matthew, and then it's added in the later Gospels. So here's what really gets me. Jesus isn't going to show them a sign. We can't read the minds of whoever these people might be, pretend they're really actual people who are asking for a sign. And I wrote an article on this. How do we know they're not seriously asking for evidence? Show us that you are the one. John the Baptist actually doubted, according to him going to prison. He sends a, a messenger and says, is it true? Are you really the one? Like, prove it. How? And he says, well, the blind see, the dead rise, you know, risen, or whatever he says in that quote. I may be taking that out of context. The point is, there is evidence. There are signs. So John's like, okay, whew, he is the one, right? But he won't give a sign to these people who are asking for signs. I'm a skeptic. I'm a non-believer. I don't believe anymore. I used to believe. But at this point, I, I regard, I need more evidence. I need more proof. Like, that's just how I feel about it. And will that happen? He shows up to doubting Thomas. And I think we should get into that passage at some point. I think the author is an apologist, purposefully writing that narrative to get people who will never see and experience what Thomas experiences to believe nonetheless. Like, it is psychological warfare. Like, they know how to keep you trapped. If you leave, oh, well, you were one of those seeds that never really sprouted. If you ask for a sign, well, you, you know, Jesus said it's better that you don't get a sign. Just believe. There's always a, a loophole. And uh, one more thing, and I'm going to bring on a couple people to hang out and chat with me here. One more thing, and then we'll play a few clips as we go. I actually did a video, or I joined a video last night. I'm going to try and not, like, butcher the time here. All right, here we go. This was with uh, uh, Muslim buddies of mine. Let me stop this and share it again so you can actually hear it. 
And uh, they're, I think they're, I would suggest, I would put them as Muslim apologists to some degree. They're defending Islam. And uh, I think they want to convince people, of course, what Muslim who's like devout isn't trying to convince people like most devout Christians are trying to convince people of their faith and that it's true. So they they stand there to defend their faith and they take challenges and things like that. I wasn't there to challenge. I was there hanging out and they were asking me questions. Why are you an atheist? So let's hear what they have to say real quick here. Yeah, I think that's that's where we would have to start from. Let me um, epistemology. Yeah. Let me let me let me read something from the Quran. Real and quick. just so you know, the epistemology thing is because I I'm like really skeptical of all the data they're bringing up, of course. And let's see what what gets said. Our friend, friendly Muslim, who's in the chat, is actually uh, here on this last night. Uh, inshallah. And and then we, uh, I want to respect Derek's time. He said that he didn't he didn't yeah, need to go. Yeah, my wife's already ago. texting me and stuff, but the <laughs> wife the boy. wife He's was pissed. She, she is definitely not happy. Okay, this is in chapter uh, chapter six of the Quran, uh, verse one o nine. I'm gonna speed it up a little, so we're not like sitting too long, because we were hanging out, having a fun time. Here we go. To one eleven. So it's a uh, they swear by Allah their most solemn oath that if a sign were to come to, come to them, they would certainly believe it. Say, O Prophet, signs are only with Allah. What will make you believers realize that even if a sign were to come to them, they still would not believe? Verse one ten. We turn their uh, their hearts and eyes away from the truth as they refuse to believe at first, leaving them to wander, wander blindly in their defiance. Allah is speaking about you, my brother Derek, not just you. I have something like, in response to this too. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Okay. Uh, even if we had sent them the angels, made the dead speak to them, and assembled uh, before their own eyes every sign they demanded, <clears throat> they will not have believed unless Allah so will. But most of them are ignorant of this. So I have a question about that verse that yeah, I'd like to read. From. Has that happened? That verse right there has has God actually done those things, and then people have rejected them, or is this presupposing that well they're so rejecting of it that even if this happened, they would still not accept it? Because in the New Testament, Lazarus dies in a parable, and it says something like, "Well, send back uh, someone from the dead to tell my five brothers." And he goes, "Listen, they have the law and the prophets. Even if we sent someone back from the dead, they won't believe in the truth." And if you turn to Mark in the Gospel of Mark, chapter eight, which I'm not a believer, but this is something I wrote an article on recently. The Pharisees went to Jesus and began to argue with him. They don't believe he's the Son of God. They tested him by demanding that he perform a miraculous sign from heaven with a deep sigh he asked why do these people demand a sign i can guarantee this truth if these people are given a sign it will be far different than what they want it's interesting how that's usually the case then he left them there he got into a boat again and crossed to the other side of the sea of galilee and then elsewhere when they asked for a sign in the early gospel of mark he said no sign will be given to them then in the gospel of mark, so I, i'm kind of repeating myself here in terms of what i just said earlier let me let's fast forward it a little bit because our Muslim friend here is going to pretty much say like, this is something that I really wish more believers didn't do, but I feel like I, I got a little bit like, you know, like it flusters me when I hear believers kind of push this stuff, but it's in their literature. So you can't help it. Right. It's part of their beliefs. They really believe the words of those texts and that those words of those texts say people like me are dishonest and they're lying when they say they would really believe if there was actual evidence but we know that that's not true because, well, our text says that even if someone was brought back from the dead or even if God did this or that or whatever, eh, they won't believe. But only if Allah did it or whatever it might be or only if Jesus you know, reveals it or God's spirit. Calvinists would say God has to like give you the spirit and make you come to life. Let's see what he says, though built into their text is they project that people won't believe in things if they really did have these signs. And it's because it's built into the foundation of their faith. So while you want to destroy the or break down the, the epistemological approach I'm coming mm. into this, I think that the epistemology of trusting that this text is accurate when it says if these things actually happen, they still wouldn't believe. I would doubt that. I'm personally someone who would say, are you like, no, I wouldn't. I don't. That doesn't happen, though. It's a, it's supposing that, well, if they did that, they're just such like, 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 like my point is like name a moment where this happened, what it's describing. Well, even if we brought back some from the dead and if we had this and we had eyeballs sucked back into their sockets or whatever the miraculous demands of the people are, did those demands ever happen? Because, and then they rejected it. Well, you can go to the gospels and you could say Pharisees were in the synagogue at one point and then Jesus performs a miracle in front of them and they're so hard hearted. See, here we have evidence. They walk out of the synagogue after Jesus performs miracles in front of them. And they go, we got to get rid of this guy. He just performed miracles. We got to kill him. How are we going to do it? Like, come on. Are you actually believing that this really happened and real miracles are happening? I mean, this guy could have been in there performing like what we see is like uh, all of these uh, – uh, Christian money-making TV evangelist to make your leg grow and all that on Benny Hinn type miracles. I mean, was Jesus doing stuff like that? I don't know. And if you think he's a phony like that, that's different. Maybe they're skeptical and they go, dude, this guy's such a phony BSer, but so many people are buying into his stuff. We got to get him out of here. I don't know. 
But if you really believe that real miracles happen and Jesus did them, and then they reject it, I just can't buy it. I would need to know that people actually saw these things and then turned around and rejected it. And then would we still want to universalize it and say anyone who ever got these kind of signs would reject it? But our good friend uh, Isa uh, Dawa in here, he was like, uh, well, I'm just trying to say you're probably going to go to hell or something. He was joking. We had fun because I don't get threatened by it. It doesn't scare me at all. But it makes me think like, remember, they're right. And if you're an atheist or a skeptic or whatever – you have no you have no leg to stand on because they start with the proposition they're true. I had a real blast hanging out talking to them though. So, all right. I hope that you aren't asleep. If you are, buzz yourself, wake up because we have some people in the chat and I'm going to bring them on. Here we go. All right. First of all, we have who is this guy? Hello? 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 Yo. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hello, uh, Derek Bennett. Is that you or is that uh, Italiano hey. or something? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Listen, man, in the name of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, I rebuke you. My video quality is not good, guys. It was fading out. It was glitching for a second, but it's good now. Here, let me try something. No, it, was, it got better. It got better. Dr. Kip, what's up, dude? Hey, man. Hey, guys. Well, you guys. welcome Listen, to the channel and listening to me vent. I have video evidence that that Kenneth Copeland is a prophet. And I can prove it right now. First of all, look at this man right here. Mm. That is the face of a <laughs> full-blown prophet right there. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm not gay, but I'd probably give that guy a shot. <laughs> oh, you want to see the clips? Of, wow. do, you want to see, do you want to see it, dude? I want to see it, but just so you like, look, William Kosinski. Uh, so Derek, again, I have ten grand to prove it. To when prove up, what? I, listen, th I don't know yet. I need to see what he's saying up here. I, I didn't get to see everybody. Thank you for like self-publishing and smash that like button. What did he say? Actually, I'm not triggered by questions, just the ignorance that repeats itself here. I'm interested to see what is what is it that the ignorance is. I'm trying to great since you're brilliant, let's do this. Derek, you made a good point. You made a good point is that these texts have a defense against people who are asking for signs or people who don't have faith. It it already like these texts that are supposed to be sacred texts that are handed down their oracles from God, whatever you want to call it. But they're also telling you that, oh, if they give you a sign, they won't listen anyway. So yeah. right away, so anybody who has the pre presupposition that this is true can automatically just use that as a as a shield against somebody who says, well, how come I don't see God anyway? How come God's not showing up in my room right now? How come the sky hasn't turned red and said, hey, make sure you read the Bible tonight? How come none of that ever happens? They'll say, see, it says it already in the text. We knew you were going to say that. Yeah, the Christians have that 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 foundation in the literature. And it and it is an apologetic literature. Constantly in the text, it's trying to defend the worldview. It's defending the concept of Jesus is the way, the truth. He is the Messiah. Um, and then there's kind of these narratives that they're not as explicit, but they're implied. And it's like this... Thomas doesn't believe. Oh, we'll make an example out of Thomas. Thomas sees him all of a sudden. Huh, you watch. You're witnessing someone who's a skeptic get yeah. convinced of the truth that Jesus rose from the dead. And he feels it. He knows it. And then it, he's like, my Lord, my God, I, I shouldn't have doubted you. And then it's after like, all the Thomas, miracles he already saw before that. And doesn't even right. that was logic. 101. It does. He it does. saw him walk on water. He saw him heal people and bring Lazarus back to life. And then he's just going to doubt it after that. Right. Thomas just doesn't believe this one because he's done like all these other crazy, unimaginable ones. It doesn't, he doesn't make sense. And then he's like, Thomas, you believe good, but blessed or this, I swear the author is like, he knows the reader needs to needs to hear this. This is the point. Oh, I, I am so convinced. Point. 
Yeah, he's going. This is the point. Blessed are those who don't see, reader, but still believe. That's 100% what yep. I'm convinced that that is going on right there. Thomas see, is know. not the protagonist in this story. I don't know. Papias and Irenaeus attest to the fact that the Gospels were written by the authors <laughs> that are traditionally ascribed to them. And you're talking like, you know what I mean? This is someone just just, just doing some kind of literary thing to... No. No, no. You're no. right. Uh, it... <sighs> Mark, Matthew, these guys were there. Yeah. The next best thing to having a camera. And, uh, and we can know that <laughs> based on the attestation of the church fathers. Shut your mouth, Derek Lambert. You shut right. your mouth. Okay. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't have opened it. I... <laughs> I take back everything I said, everybody. I, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Uh, Neil, did you have a video you were going to show us of someone that yeah, was a true I just wanted to switch up the change of pace and get a quick little laugh. But this is okay. This is just video. Don't evidence. let it ding me. Don't let it ding me. No, it's don't, it's two minutes long. Well, okay. you know, I don't think it'll ding you. I'm, I hope not, because I, I don't think. Yeah. Let me tell you, <laughs> those listen, profits are all video, about that money. This is video evidence that Kenneth Copeland is a mediator between heaven and earth he is taken over by the holy spirit and it's undeniable are you ready guys i'm, I'm willing to believe if it's true all right you will um, believe okay chance to raise your income praise god you missed a place to shout right there that you need to get used to this now <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> glory to god of course all of our offerings will go toward the outreaches of kenneth copeland ministries and and uh <laughs> Hold on, pause this for a second. Copeland. I got, right. You got to pause it periodically just yeah, to yeah, make yeah, yeah. sure they don't try it's to. It's funny it. how that's the first thing he says. <laughs> yeah, you know, that money. Go to my ministry and make sure you donate. Make sure. <laughs> that was perfect. That, uh, I think he's at Victory Church in Calgary, Alberta. He Oh, have you oh, seen this before? This is, watch what he says no, next. But I, I mean, I grew oh, up you, in Calgary. You're, you're right, because watch what he says next. Ministries Canada, and it is, and and the the territories under which the Canadian office uh, is. Shigama. What? what? <laughs> what was that? Who knows? Just, Did he just like? <laughs> if you can figure out what this means, other than it's a prophecy, then I'll I'll pay you. Okay, hold up. Let me see. <laughs> no, he did not. He just starts babbling off with. with no, I'm, I'm, he did not. That's that Canadian baptism, Baptist church right there. <laughs> Bro, hold on. I got to see what happens oh, here. This is good. Not like a Baptist it. church. <laughs> this is good. This is good. I know what he said. There. <laughs> Booga, 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 booga. <laughs> Dude. I, do you want to know what he's saying? <laughs> Tell me what he's saying, Derek. Tell he's me what he's saying, saying. y'all, I have an infection in a place I'd rather not mention. <laughs> and I'm wondering if there is a cream for that. You can't. Hey. Give us the oil. Here we go. Here we go. The anointing oil. That's a strong point. That's a good point right there. I'm convinced. I wish I was that good when I like reenact my speaking in tongues. I wish I actually was I that confident. I don't think, yeah, because I don't think he's that good. He's not as good as Tilton was. Oh, man. Oh, man. It sounds like you're just saying, Dala la la puka buka buka nuku. Pretty much. Dala laka. Dala laka puka chica. Tika puka. It's, 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 starting, it's starting to. Uh, it's starting to get under me, my skin. It's convincing me. It's starting to convince me that there might be something to this guy. Let's let's see what else he says. A movement of the Spirit of God that has been prayed over, called down, cried over, died over, sought after. People. Is he going to say something else goofy, or was it mainly the oh, first the whole, part? The whole thing is just completely wacky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
Oh, well, yeah, that's pretty much what he, it's the same shit. So he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wish he does the speaking in tongues again, man. Oh, look at that face. Dude, that's a real... <laughs> Centuries. People. Crying and dying. I mean, it's like he's singing the message. He's doesn't singing it, it. Doesn't it amaze you that the, oh. the, the, the end result of the evolution of Christianity from the ancient world in Turkey and at Antioch, Syria, Egypt, whatever, that made its way over the course of millennia and centuries, that makes its way over the Atlantic Ocean into the Americas, and then you end up with this. I thought Darth Vader had tossed him down like a poop chute in space or something, and he exploded. No, because they brought him back in in the last Skywalker. That's right. <laughs> That's what he's doing here. Um, he's guys, he created Snoke. <laughs> would would uh, so first of all, I don't know if you guys saw the beginning. I know that Derek and and Neil did. Did you see the beginning, Kip? Or are you uh, you busy at the moment? I think he's gone. He may have had to run. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. I'm just talking to my son on the phone. Okay, no biggie. No biggie, bro. All right, I'm going to share something here real quick. Uh, I feel like uh, this guy right here, real quick, just to point out, he is asked by Darren Brown. I watched this last night when I was laying in bed, and um, this guy from Ukraine has this ability, supposedly, to see things through boxes like he has x-ray vision he's like a level six in whatever this movement is that he started where they're paying like seven eight hundred euros to go and they take blind people there to convince them how to see even though they're blind this is a real place I, that he, these people make money out of it and darren brown ends up questioning this guy and this guy is like not having it you could tell he he is not okay with any questioning or being skeptical let me see the superhuman figure revered by so many who has reached exalted heights of level six and even mentioned that he could levitate it reminds me of scientology by the way here check this out and even mentioned that he could levitate and that we could too so he supposedly has powers and he can give you powers as well and i just figured i'd show you like this guy gets questioned. I don't want to get dinged by YouTube, but started from three years old. But so he's asking him about his powers, where he's getting his powers from. And and somewhere like toward the end, this guy is not happy with Darren. And Darren's like, tell me what's in the, see the box on the right. He says, tell me what's in that box. And he's like, I'm not playing your games. I'm not playing your games. And he got put on the spot. Like, don't you try to, you know, prove me and embarrass me because I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to embarrass me. And he's like, I mean, it would be really simple. You have the ability to see through things. You could literally blow my mind, convince Darren. Darren, if if this dude could seriously see what was in that box, Darren's mind would break. He'd be so, oh, my gosh. He'd be like, is this the guy? Did we find the one? And, of course, he doesn't do it. He's embarrassed and angered. The other one I wanted to just show the screen on was this guy. You guys have probably seen this one before. James Randy, yeah, where yeah. he like debunks this guy, Hydra. Yeah. Hydric. Yeah. Isn't and that he funny puts, how that works? When when they have their own sta stages and props, everything's flawless. They can perform magic. But as soon as someone comes along on their own stage and they let you on their show and they blindside you with something, oh, you blindsided me. Well, hmm. if it's real, it's real. You should be able to, it doesn't matter if I blindside you, right? You think I mean, Jesus? Would, you think Jesus wouldn't be able to walk on water if if the Pharisees blindsided him when he wasn't dude, expecting it? Supposedly, he did miracles in front of them at the exactly. synagogue, like I said earlier, and they didn't believe. Which is why I think believers reading the literature hear people like me who are like, just prove it. Like if I could just have better evidence, this is we, like it would convince me. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You're a Pharisee. You're like <laughs> one of those people who just. And it's like. This is the problem, I think, is that we're going to a, a, the literature is teaching them this. Um, you guys want to open the room? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's bring uh, I saw Who Caleb wants to challenge Derek in oh, what well, he said to them. <laughs> well, Caleb Jackson, by the way, I gave him a shout out the other day. I thought I said he was my Caleb's favorite my apologist. Boy. Yeah, he's my favorite too. I like Caleb. And uh I'm I'm gonna have to pin that. I just posted the link. He's lurking around in the chat. Where's he at? 
Um, he was. I don't know if he's asked if we were open up the room, but I'd love to like have a conversation and be able to speak my mind and just say what the heck I really think is going on. Because uh, I'm sometimes, you know, hey, you're so nice to people you're friends with or whatever. You want to be kind. You don't want to seem like a rude douchebag or anything. But you, you feel like you should at least be able to say what you really think is going on and, and why people think the way they do. And sometimes I catch myself being too nice and not saying what I think is going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, so, don't forget, though, before you um, – just keep in mind that the cleaving asunder – and Sura 82 says that from which they will find no escape. What will make you realize what the day of judgment will be? That, well, there's fear there. If this is true, you're screwed. What will make you realize? Khalil, what's up, man? Welcome. What's up, brother? Hey, I was bringing up the clip last night, and uh, I was I was talking about how um, that Sura... You're outside in the in the backyard. That's of course, I'm. Yeah. Um, I was bringing up one ten that that was brought up by uh, Isa, and I think it was one ten. Yeah, let me bring that up here. On what I thought was going on here. Uh, this is not six. This is five. Hold up. While you're looking for that, can I ask him what do you what are your thoughts on du dual carnage? I, I always ask every time every Muslim this question because I get a, it's an interesting. What is it called? Uh, it's from the, from the chapter of the cave, the dual carnage, the, the two horned one. I'm not familiar with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a pass by sentence. I was just wondering. It's but worth a, checking a lot, out. A lot of people think that it might be based on Alexander the Great. Some people say King Cyrus. Other people have like some people say Moses. I've heard. I yeah, but the earliest is Alexander the Great, because in yeah. the Alexander Romance is a passage that literally the sequence is like identical. The two mountains, he prays to God, the mountains, the uh, the border gets put up and then Gog and Magog are left out. And then you look in the Quran, it says two mountains, dual Karnain, prays to God, the, he puts up the wall and, and Gog and Magog are left out. So mm -hmm. that's like all those there's that's like five different parallels right there. Well, the earliest Muslim uh, com commentators, if you will, or people who that are coming on this, they think it is Alexander the Great. But I actually I did interview a scholar on this who yeah, knows the Arabic, knows the history. And there was pre-legends, like you say, you know, there's legends of Alexander the Great that have been going on in the Arabian region, but also all around. You know, these legends have been floating around and there's a version of it that we find in the Quran. And this is like goes back to what we were talking about last night, Khalil, because I was pointing out in Surah 6, 110, and I'll share the screen because I think that's why I had it on the wrong. I'm definitely not omniscient here. Um, let me share my screen. Yeah, bro, these are rookie mistakes, bro. You, you're a pro at this. I know. I thought I was good. <laughs> we, turn, uh, we turn their hearts and eyes away from the truth as they... Uh, refused to believe at first, leaving him to wonder blindly in a defiance. Sorry, it was 109. This is Surah 6. They swear by Allah their most solemn oaths that if a sign were to come to them, they would certainly believe in it. Say, O Prophet, signs are only with Allah. What will make you believers realize that even if a sign were to come to them, they still would not believe? We turn their hearts and their eyes away from the truth as they refuse to believe at first leaving them to wonder bl blindly in their defiance. Even if we had sent them the angels, made the dead speak to them, and assembled before their own eyes every sign they demanded, they still would not have believed, unless Allah so willed. But most of them are ignorant of this. And then it continues. And so we have made for every prophet enemies. But like this was what was brought up last night when I was asked about my epistemology and why I hold off caution why I don't believe I need way better data than a book or that people memorize books or that people recite books or any of that kind of stuff is somehow miraculous to someone who believes that's miraculous to them to a Christian. Somehow the gospels or somehow these things are miraculous to them in some way, but they actually do believe Jesus rose from the dead without having actual proof, right? We can't prove any of this stuff, but they say they have evidence, but the way they interpret their evidence is in certain ways. Right. And I'm highly suspect of this. I feel like this is projecting. 
this is projecting from like an omniscient eye as if we know that people would not believe who had these signs. There's a lot of people that I've heard who say that they had an experience of some type of miraculous thing or whatever that convinced them to believe, you know, oh my gosh, you, I almost oh, died. And I got a yeah, little bit of an echo. Can, can I play Muslim advocate for yeah. a second? Did you know, did you, this is a fact, this is a real history fact too, <laughs> that the, when the Constantinople was, was uh, conquered by the Turks, there was a blood moon during the week that it t was taken down. Which is a big deal. Blood moon. Blood moon. Yeah, it was seen as a it was seen as a terrible omen for the Christians, and uh, Mahmed Mehmed too was like, "This is it. God's telling us to take the city," and they took the city. Just saying, man. Just saying. There you go. Prophecy done. There you go. Now, Put that on the list. If I was a Muslim, <laughs> I was a Muslim, I would be all over that, and I would be all over. Hey, Christians. I wouldn't debate atheists, but I'd be like, "Hey, Christians." What happened to the seven churches of Asia? What happened to the church of Antioch? What happened to the churches in, in uh, Egypt? Oh, that's right. They're all mosques now. Gotcha. That's what I, that, that, I'd be hammering those points away. I'd be hammering those points away. I'm Bro, too much uh, of a skeptic for that. <laughs> I just feel like when you hear these, when you, when you read these things, you hear these things in the Quran, it's so obviously an internally designed defense mechanism. You know what I mean? Like, like you find pretty much in any cult. That's clearly what it is. Now, when you hear or read these things in the New Testament, it's not. That's, that's, it's legitimate there. <laughs> but in the Quran, it's clearly a defense mechanism. But not, but not in Christianity. In case, in, in in case nobody knows, Derek is playing... An apologist tonight, yeah. okay? Derek Bennett is playing an apologist. I am an apologist. The funniest to me is when you get these Christian YouTubers that are like, Muhammad is not in the Old Testament. Why do they think they see him there? And it's like, well, they're interpreting that way the same way you're interpreting Jesus. I, 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 I got I to gotta say something to that. Yeah. Why are Muslims trying to put the prophet, peace be upon him, in the Bible? We don't believe that it's true. Who cares? Nice, nice. I like Who that. cares? But it's funny to me when Christians criticize Muslims for doing that, but they do the exact same thing with Jesus. Jesus is yeah, not I, in the Old Testament. I, 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 think, I, I, think I, know, I think I know billionaire apologist. Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't he, want to dox has... his real name, but... <laughs> sure, sure, oh, sure. they all know my real name. It's okay. We know. It's Jesus Christ. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you're all billionaires, aren't you? At the, uh, at the stuff you did the other day with the billion, the billion uh, dollar industry thing, so there you go. Oh, that's, yeah. If that's if the other guys, me. I spoke with Derek about this last night. But when it comes to the other guys in the room, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are are atheists. I don't bring my scripture to to atheists and say, "Here's the Quran. If there's miracles all throughout this thing. You should believe in this." I don't I don't use that approach whatsoever. So, I, I it never convinced me when I was an atheist. I was an atheist for twelve years. Never convinced me. Um, so I don't dialogue. Is that what it is? Just, just open dialogue. I, I study philosophy. So yeah. what I will do is argue for the existence of God. There is no one argument that proves the existence of God. That's nonsense. Um, but I would say that there are a daisy chain. You can daisy chain certain arguments together step by step by step, which gives you all of the nuances rather than bringing a holy book to the table with all the baggage that comes with it and asking somebody to believe in it. You can go through all the little steps that get you there, and I think that I think that there needs to be at least an hour long to two hour long conversation that needs to be had before the word God or the word Quran even comes up. Yeah, I so, think that so that's the most we, reasonable way. Just so like everybody knows, when we get super chats, people are asking for indulgences for their souls, so we have to look out for them and make sure we address them to make sure that they go into heaven. Blake, thank you for the super chat. I'm agnostic, but was wondering when Christianity began, were there other religions that had epistles being yes. written, or was it only Christianity? Yeah, the um, the Platonists had epistles. Um, there is Homeric. I guess the Homeric hymns are. There's you can call it. I mean, I guess it's not an epistle, but the Platonists have these epistles that I mean, Rep the Republic is basically like an epistle in a way, you know, it's a, you know, it's the it's a platonic dialogue uh, genre, basically, is what that is. 
I know there were epistles. I wouldn't be able to say what kind because talking to some of the academics, they go into what's epistolary fiction. And so like, are some of these epistles authentic? Are they uh, fiction? And it's not just like New Testament issues. This is something that they say is common in this era. I don't know the religion. See, look, at, this is what it's called. It's called the epistle. Can you see that or no? Uh, uh, not much. Let me put you full screen real quick for a second. The epistle of Porphyry, Porphyry. to the Egyptian and Nebo. This is Geomachus. This is a third century Neoplatonist or Middle Platonist. I, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, nice. Neoplatonist. So yeah, there, there definitely was other religions and, and spiritual movements that used epistles as a form of uh, getting their theology out. It was kind of the, it was the way they did things in, in the same in that time period. The you can't use treatises, basically. Yeah, Derek sure. Bennett, you can't use that as an apologetic now. I know you were going to try and use that oh, as an. It oh, isn't going to work. Gonna... <laughs> Constellation Pegasus wants to go to heaven. Thank you so much. You will go to heaven if the seven speakers here don't get into the kingdom hall soon. You're going to die at Armageddon. I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> I think I'm all right. I've been saved. Thank you. Well, do they have I don't know about Derek. baptisms? I'm a busy man, but I can I can do a drive through. <laughs> Listen, I dish out salvation. Okay. So I, <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of the, ask me. I got you. Uh, Constellation's always in the chat showing love. Thank you, Constellation. Anyway, um, what, what, um, what do we want to discuss? Because I think that apologetics is manipulative. I mean, I'm calling it out. I'm saying it. I made the title. I made the thumbnail. I don't buy it. I think it's manipulative, and I think that we could put a billionaire on the line. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I'm kidding. Caleb, what do, you, what do you have to say? You've been saying so much in your mind. I've been reading it, and I just said, you know, it's time for everybody else to hear what I've been knowing all along. Wow, you should uh, go to Darren Brown if you can read mine. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> That's a, that's great. Yeah, no, I mean, part of me wants to agree. I think certain elements, I'm, I'm going to try to to balance it out here and try to play my, my cards very carefully. I think there are certainly elements of apologetics I think are, uh, I'm hesitant to say dishonest, but I don't think I'd be too far, like young earth creationism or, I don't know, some really fringe uh, things, but it really just depends. And, and I agree. I think the issue is it's hard to start with a, you know, you don't want to start with your conclusion and work backward backwards you really want to look at stuff objectively and i think it's really hard to look at stuff objectively and i try my hardest to do that and you know that i attempt my hardest to do that did uh, you hear my I, shout out to, about you the other day uh, on this show i don't yes i was, I was oh. asked who my favorite apologist was oh you didn't say jonathan sheffield really uh, well, he said he, the billionaire apologist jonathan he's, look jonathan's chill but he, like when it comes jonathan to actually more get, qualified than you know, i am when it comes to engaging and like listening and being laid back and taking punches and stuff and then punching back, you're way more chill. Yeah, I don't fight you hard enough, unfortunately. I really should try. <laughs> but, uh, you should be more dogmatic. You got, and more you got that Christian grace going, that Christian grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I try to play in the middle. Like, you know, it's like I can purview where it's like on the one hand, I, I won't affirm traditional authorship of all four gospels like some of my more conservative friends, but, but I also don't reject it for all of them so I, i'm like okay with maybe two of them so I, I i'm trying to be as careful as i can right so uh, if i remember correctly are you are you a universalist uh christian universalist yeah okay i'm glad he is uh, too yeah we're all gonna be up in heaven one day and you'll be like dang it you know, you I, got, right. I hope you're right dude dr kip has to get out of here so kip i, I wish gotta you run could, guys i really I'm wish you sorry. could have stayed but i'll probably be getting yeah. going soon too i gotta do some editing Hey, Caleb. Uh, I'll stick around a couple more minutes. I have to go buy corn. Oh. <laughs> we'll get that corn. Yeah, we'll corn. get that corn, Kip. All right, hey, Kip. Thanks for coming through, Later, brother. guys. Bye. Okay. Dr. Kill Take there. Care. That was Dr. Kill. All right, I'm bringing on the other yeah, couple people care. here. What's, What's up? up? Oh, we got Aaron with us. You calling in tonight, Aaron? Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, Khalil. <laughs> uh, what's going on, man? <laughs> Oh, yeah, What's up, I was guys? Actually, I was... Hey there. Can you hear me? Hey. Can you hear me? He must have a delay or something. Yeah, it might be. Hello? We got a question for Khalil. Khalil, why does the Quran get embryology wrong? 2314. <sighs> What's wrong about it? 
people are being tough right now. Uh, it, is yeah. this that part where they're talking about uh, a blood clot or something or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It it, t- it talks about the embryo uh, embryological process um, and some of the Arabic words that are in, in, used in there. In the English version, it seems like a chronological event, but if you go to the actual Arabic words, there's thinking and things that are happening in 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 synchrony. Uh, so they're having, happening simultaneously, and that's a lot of times when the people they only read the English version of the Quran, um, they're gonna they're gonna pull out these problems. Uh, but when you go back to the, if you just simply go to Quran.com and look at the direct word for word translation of these things, a lot of these simple problems, like I hear this one almost every time uh, that I go live on my channel. It's it's always this is like like I like when I before I start my stream. I automatically uh, pull up certain um, certain web pages that that already go to debunk what I already know somebody's going to bring up, right? So it's uh, I'm just going to ask people to bring some logical arguments against Islam instead of I read the English version and it says this. Why is your religion wrong? What do you, you know? think about what do you think about when? Okay, so like this is what gets me. I'll talk to Christian apologists. They will argue, right? And you, Caleb, you're you're far more I feel uh, accepting of things like ancient cosmology was wrong. Uh, they thought the Earth was flat or hard, solid dome cosmology. Is the ancient Near Eastern cosmology? Are you saying the Earth isn't flat, Derek? I'm saying the Earth isn't Gosh, flat. Wow. I know, I know. It's I'm what such a, what a surprise. I, know. I've, I remember you doing a flat Earth show one time with um, Professor, with, who is it, Professor Dave, I think. Yep. Yeah, and I was like, wow, you know. I, Derek is really uh, going to a very, very low bar here, but you know, someone that do it, I, I guess. <laughs> I just want to bring the point out that like, when you say this, right, there are websites devoted to try and show you why, no, 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 the circle disc of the earth. And they find ways to say that the Bible's saying the earth isn't flat. It's actually a globe and, and, and then goes on and on and on. And there's no convincing a Bible believing Christian who is devout in their religion that their text actually teaches certain things. There's always interpretation wiggle room to try and find a way out of it. And I'm wondering if that might be what happens when people are going to the Quran to say, hey, uh, the Quran is miraculously accurate on knowing all scientific facts. It does not have a single thing error wise in terms of accuracy. So I guess like if I was reading literature, any literature from any period in the ancient Near East or anywhere, I would expect them to only know what they know at the time that they're writing, which is normal. I mean, we're going to get blamed at some point in the 2020s for thinking something about the world and science or whatever, that in 100, 200, 300 years, you're going to look back and go, they were wrong. That doesn't mean everything that we live and think about is wrong. That just means they didn't know certain things we've discovered over time. And I, I feel like that the the Quran teaches scientific miracles through, 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 through. And it's like defending that to the core Instead of letting it being like an ancient text that's teaching maybe the cosmology of what it might have been in Arabia or anywhere else. Do you see the gist I'm going with that, Khalil? What do you think of that kind of approach? Yeah, and this is why I always say, like, I don't use this type of argumentation when speaking with somebody who, for one, doesn't believe in the Quran and for two, doesn't even believe in a God to begin with. Because I think there's way more fundamental conversations that need to be had before anybody with a skeptical mind like myself is going to take any of this seriously. And that's that. And, and it may seem like a cop out to some, but I don't necessarily really speak with atheists about what the Quran says. Um, uh, about the meanings of why God did certain things. Um, at first, I'd like to have the fundamental discussion. Right? Is there a God? Like, if I was to bring the analogy, if a ma- if I told you that a magical unicorn came into my house and took a poop on my couch and then rubbed its hooves into my couch, why the hell are we going to have a discussion on why it was rubbing its crap into my couch before that? Before we have established if there's a magical unicorn. That would be the fundamental conversation to have before we dig into the weeds of what this magical unicorn did and why he did it. Well, if I could find reasons that the unicorn probably didn't go into the house and that we found ways where you made up the unicorn and those are natural ways of showing that something looks more human than divine, that would be why I would approach it. I'm more interested because we can get philosophical and you could run a 
Graham Oppie and find a conclusion where atheism naturalism makes perfect sense and everybody's happy and that you don't have to draw the the theistic argument. We can go with your conclusion. Hey, we think there's something there. And each person has an argument that makes logical sense at the end of the day. That's why at the end of the day, it's moot to me because it sounds like a brute fact and we're making assumptions. I would rather go to the literature, look at the text, see if there's flaws, see if there's problems, see if this is human. That's why I take that approach. But then again, most atheists, I bet you probably communicate with, if you do, are into the text. They're not really serious about and, – and, and they probably want to take a poop on the text instead of saying, let's try to understand what is being said. Like I get I'm a skeptic, and maybe I'm bashing sometimes with my titles and stuff, Caleb, but – I really engage. Do I not? You got to give it to me. Like, I really do try to get into this stuff. And Khalil, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm pretty sure your magic unicorn was just Amber Heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's that, good. That was good. That was. Yeah, that, that was good. I actually. Well, I, I was. Exactly well, my magical unicorn never stepped on a bee, so there's that. <laughs> no, yeah. I agree with you. My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think gotta take Khalil, a pee. I think Khalil is <laughs> right about getting the uh, arguments from God, and that that's a good place to start, and uh, not starting with the text. But I'm also sympathetic to the idea of okay, there's a God, so what if he doesn't interact with humans who really care? So I think there's a element to both of those those ways. But uh, I don't know. Derek says he's open to it with his uh, you know catchy titles to get views because you know he's just doing it for for the money. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I dude, you're course. supposed to keep that a secret. I know. I. I I spoiled it. Yeah, it's like it's okay. Oh it, man, the Illuminati, kind of like a Illuminati high court is gonna be pissed now. On a show Dude, before. my life is the gospel of Mark. You're not supposed to reveal this stuff. This is only I, for I the think inner your channel is probably closer to the gospel of Peter than the gospel of Mark. Oh, 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 I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Talking think, crosses, talking crosses. If it, but if it's crossing, then that's a that's better than Mark anyway. So I mean, it's a compliment. If it, oh, yeah. You know, so. Hey, look, someone else wants to go to heaven. Let's let's take their thing. If I go get off track, bring me back. I'm here for you guys, Corey. Mark Fisher is truth an objective metaphysical reality. I think this is like a philosophical question. Hmm. Well, if we say no, wouldn't that have to be true? So I, I, <laughs> if I say no, it's not. That statement's true. So I don't see how I can get around that. So yeah. Yeah, that seems like a yeah, that's kind of self-refuting. Truth corresponds with reality. Then are you saying is real does reality exist in reality? Yeah, I think find truth first, right? And then and then we go down the whole T jump rabbit hole. Oh, oh gosh. boy, T jump. Reality is reality. Yes, <laughs> I've seen that. That's ontology T jump. <laughs> Corey, thank you for uh, getting wings and meeting me in the mansions I have prepared for you. Um, made by Jim Bob, what's manipulation if there is no free will, and how can there be anything wrong with manipulation from a naturalist view? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you, Derek. You chuckled. I'll let you. You're a naturalist. Oh, my goodness. A naturalist He's apologist. He's an apologist, isn't he? Yeah, He's there. a naturalist atheist apologist. Duh. Whoa. Just kidding. I mean, does manipulation harm people? If your answer is yes, we're all done here. Simple. Yeah, because through determinism, isn't everything a manipulation? You're just like a series of causes and effects from a prior he's part of a tape being played you're not you don't even you just think you have control but you really don't depends yeah. if you're a compatibilist or not because compatibilists would say it's determined yet you can still have manipulation and freedom and determinists and libertarians will say that doesn't make any sense so hey, um, I, I know there's a lot of dualists who think that your choices are like you're choosing which side based on your your lot in life like they they limit it it's like almost like determinism but you have a little bit of wiggle room to choose which side you want. Hmm. I guess a better question for Derek would have been like, do you, so I, and I, I don't even use the more argument that much, but so I guess just to clarify, are you saying that you associate harm with, or do you associate well being with good or maybe I'm just misunderstanding how you were phrasing that when you were talking about, does it cause harm? Does manipulating people cause harm? Right. Yes or no? If it does, if it does, because if it does, then it's wrong. Correct. Okay, so you, yeah, you're saying if it causes harm, then it's wrong. Okay, gotcha. That's what it's I like a saying. what is that? A philosopher Peter Singer is it? Mm -hmm. He has like a, a worldview like that. It's pretty much if it's 
it's aiming at how do we reduce suffering in the world? And it, it's, it's kind of that kind of approach. Good Another story. good atheist philosopher to look at is uh, his name's Galen Strawson. If, if yeah, I, Derek, I think you should reach out to Galen Strawson and have him come on. Another cool guy to talk to is a, a, a atheist philosopher by the name of Donald Hoffman. Um, Donald Hoffman has a really good stuff, a lot of really good stuff on like substance dualism and the mind body problem. Mm. Goes into consciousness real deep. He's an atheist, but he's a dual su a substance dualist. Uh, so he's not just a mere naturalist. He actually believes in the distinction between consciousness and, and material. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying I won't get into that. That will be stuff I want to get into. I also want to get both angles because I know there's some that are taking the purely materialistic approach and think that the faculties of our, our brain, they're just limitations on what we know. And then there's those people who think everything has a little bit of consciousness and other levels of things have more consciousness. And I mean, there's just all sorts of and it's interesting to hear. But I yeah. like to hear the debate happen from people. Yeah, I think that's called like panantheism. Yeah. Panantheism. Yeah. You know, what's also weird is there are there are atheists who are dualists and there are Christians who are physicalists, which is really interesting, I think. Like Peter Van Inwagen doesn't believe in a soul and he's a Christian. So that's that's I think that's interesting. He's Kinda just weird. saying he's the, he's not a true Christian. Come on, <laughs> maybe uh, not true. Yes, <laughs> you're not a true Scotsman. I yeah. wanna I wanna just say I'm not going to be asking this question, so please be respectful of people who are on the show. I don't like that. Uh, please do not do stuff like that to the guests. I ask nicely. Um, so that is just not okay. I don't care what people believe, what people wow. you know where they stand. Don't do it. It's not funny, and I'm not interested in that. That's not the kind of human being I want to be. It's none of our business, to be honest with you. Um, where is the next super chat? Constellation. Hey, where I'm gonna get going, Derek. If I can give 20 seconds for a plug real quick or 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm releasing a video tomorrow morning with the, the great sage himself, M. David Litwa, on the mysteries. And uh, we're getting into seven different mystery religions in the ancient world. Just going to touch the surface, but there's a whole iceberg underneath. And I'll, all the details will be told to you tomorrow when I release the video. So, How serious are you right now, though? Serious, real serious. Serious, serious. We're talking yeah. Illusionian mysteries, we're talking Orphic mysteries, uh, Egyptian, Osiris, Isis, uh, Samothrakian mysteries, all that good stuff. Go subscribe to my boy, Gnostic Informant. And also, the courses are coming out soon. Bear with us. You see how sunburned I am. I've been painting in the sun all day out in the driveway. But those courses should be ready here shortly, Neil. And you're going to have first dibs on launching it. So. It was nice what meeting are, everybody. What are these called, Neil? Mystery religions? Mystery religions. God, Mysteri that Mysterios boring. in Greek. So. Well, Neil, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, man. Thank you I'll check it out tomorrow. Nice meeting everybody. All right, guys. Yeah, yeah I, I got to jump off too because I'm. I, I got to be streaming on my own channel, so I'm going to jump over to say, my channel. Say your piece, brother. Tell it. Tell us your channel, and uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, I have a channel called EA Dawa. Uh, I stream alongside uh, in tandem with Isa Dawa. So uh, if you go over to EA Dawa and Isa Dawa, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we we live stream at least five nights a week. Um, we do between six to 16 hour streams to where we just invite anybody in to uh, either challenge Islam or defend their beliefs, whatever it may be, if you're a non-Muslim. So uh, we always try and keep it as respectful as possible. We have academic conversations, so uh, if if you're if you're interested, please uh, come on over. If you think you might have a pastor or uh, a priest or a scholar or somebody you think can argue your position, please send them on over. Uh, we'd love to uh, just just like Derek has the uh, the link pinned at the top of the side chat. I'd do the same thing on my channel. So if well, you I, I uh, if you're interested. I do want to just give a, give you a shout out. Like I know firsthand I've been over there. I've watched sometimes when I'm just relaxing in, in the evening and I tune in and they're very friendly. I mean, yeah, they want to, you know, challenge back. They're very polite though in their approach and uh, they were welcoming me in there. And then after I left, I tuned in. Remember now I didn't want to get divorced. So I went in there and, uh, and I was tuning in and they had Christians talking about that. They weren't like stopping them. They let everybody talk and share their views. So if you're looking for a community to chat with and people to learn with and whatnot, go in there and have fun. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in, Khalil. 
Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having me. And uh, and like I said, anybody, Aaron's been over uh, on my channel before. Uh, friendly Muslim, he's always over there with me. Obviously, he's the he's the the friendly Muslim. So he's got. I got be. I got a question for you though. We do have one. How do Muslims get around Allah pelting jinn with what is it stars? Are Muslims aware of this, or are many of them like Christians never read the Bible and Quran? Uh, yeah, it seems like a jabby question. Uh, if, if you want to, we can get into a discussion about that. I'm not just going to answer the question. You can come over to my channel and we can actually have a discussion about it. We can dive into the text and pull everything apart, go to the Arabic. Um, if you just want to stick with the uh, English translation that you have and have your own narrative, by all means, believe what you want to believe. But if you truly are interested in getting into it, come on over. We'll dig into all of it and tear it apart. All right, all right, all right. I, I just wanted to make sure we got your super chat there, Constellation. Thank you, Khalil. Yep, yep. All right, I'll see you guys later. All right, brother. Peace so, out. Assalamu alaikum, brother. I'll see you in a bit. Um, Blake, does God know the future but doesn't actually see it beforehand? He knows something will happen because he will make it happen, but he doesn't literally see it? That's kind of a... <laughs> Taylor, what's a... God, Taylor, what's God doing here? <laughs> I can't tell if he's asking about open theism, Molinism, or like B theory of time. It's kind of uh, wrapped up in everything. So Would you like, ask him, Blake? Which what, which part are you asking? What, just Wait. ask God for God's yeah. sake. Oh yeah. Why, didn't I think that? <laughs> God, Why is it that I'm missing a super chat? Do you guys see that? Someone had a super chat and it like disappeared. I saw it pop up, but it disappeared. A miracle. Hey, yeah, you able to hear me? <laughs> Oh, uh, Bob. wins this round. I do. <laughs> okay. I, I could, I'm to you, Caleb Jackson. I could hear it from from Mount Olympus here. And all right, Rob. I'm sorry. I just see it. What are your criteria for deciding which parts of scripture are literal or metaphorical? It seems like the criteria is anything which taken literally can be damaging because becomes allegory. I'm guessing that's for me or for more of the Muslims. I, I, I think it's a good jab for everybody to make a comment on that might be interested in saying something because we know that the philosophers, the Greek philosophers, did this with Greek literature. Zeus was raping people and they were not liking that. So they started going, That's that doesn't mean that. That that what it meant was this, or it means that. Yeah, I mean, I think genre is relevant, and you know, you can look at people like Philo or I think I want to say probably Origen or Augustine, who had very allegorical interpretations of the Old Testament. So, I mean, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the case where it's like, oh, well, now we learned something new, so we have to go back and change what we thought it meant. I mean, sometimes that happens, but I think generally it's based off the text itself. So it really just depends. I don't know that many within at least the patristic tradition that thought of more of the New Testament writings as allegorical. Uh, there were other, you know, obviously there are scholars today who think that, but uh, I think when it comes to genre, you just have to look at it context wise. So, you know, virtually no one takes the Psalms, literally, and even Job is probably a, uh, a long prose poetic structure um, and, and more of an epic, more than a, a, a narrative of history. So it just depends on what it is in the context. Aaron, you what's can you hear me? Yes. What's going on? Okay, cool, cool. Welcome well, back, cool. man. Welcome back. Last time I was in a mail truck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, let me tell you, I gave you a five-star review. Your boss is not going to fire you. I promise. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm in the union, so I should be good. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, um, so I am, I am a, a, a Christian and um, uh, probably, so I guess my comment, at least on that topic is um, for me, at least I, I, I try not to play those games. Uh, if the text is literal, like uh, many people try to bring up the book of numbers and when God commanded the killing the children, I'm not going to say, well, that was metaphorical. Um, but then you have like uh, the book of Genesis, which some um, I've heard some rabbis argue that the book of Genesis is uh, kind of poetic. And so I'm kind of um, I'm not dogmatic. I'm reading a literal Adam and Eve into it. I was um, so I'm, I, I'm more open to like maybe there's some metaphorical understanding of it, um, kind of seeing how like inspiring philosophy has um, looked into it. I was just watching his debate with um, I forgot the guy he debated, but yeah, um, he was he was talking about some other ways to look at the text. And so when it comes to text that could be interpreted as a metaphorical way, then I would 
you know, I would grant that, but I'm not going to do that for everything. Um, but I did want to ask, because I did watch some of um, Derek on Khalil's uh, podcast yesterday. And I, um, and I was, I was interested. I was kind of in and out. I was at my Muslim friend's uh, house at the moment. And, um, but I was you like, oh man, this is... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But I was just like, kidding. man, I got to listen to this because it's, it strikes me a bit odd and that an atheist like Khalil is, um, some of the ways he was convinced about Islam um, and so I, I think mainly, um, you know, maybe what he's done and what others have done is they kind of, they, they hear like the, the theology of Islam and they'll say things like, um, you know, God is only one, you know, we believe in the prophets, we believe in miracles, but they're all just regular people. And, and so like the, the, the pitch that the Dais give is very like, I would say it's, you know, receivable it's you know i i don't really disagree with it and so it seems like very easy to grasp and i think that's what people kind of hold on to and then they i don't want to say they ignore everything else but it seems to me there is sort of uh some form of ignoring other problematic information within the the faith itself and so i i was really actually interested into hearing like derek have a dialogue with khalil as an atheist and then like the way he became a Muslim and how he's like convinced that the Quran is like some well, sort of miracle. I'll say this and, and friendly Muslim, you still here? Yeah, I'm here. Bro. So you were here, you watched, you were there hanging out. You get to listen. Um, mm. I respect people on their positions, whatever the positions are. But as I listened to the way that he was describing things, I really, I take people at their word. I really think he philosophically came to some, some way he was satisfied with the idea that there was a deity and it somehow is philosophically logical for him. And I don't know what it was about Islam that somehow his critical thinking, in my opinion, isn't as strong. He got to the Quran. He found a way where he's like, people are memorizing this stuff. I, I wonder if the influence of other Muslims and their ideas and they're saying, look, this is the case. Look, this is the case. This is the case. It's a miracle. How can people memorize it? which people memorize things all the time. But if you created a tradition where people memorize it, you don't have to make that a miracle for that to be possible or for that to be the case. Um, and I, I take that textual approach because I obviously think that the Quran is a human product made by men or a man. Um, and it's clearly showing elements of things that you wouldn't find necessarily in a cave by an angel named Gabriel. There's clear reasons to see the human development and the oral traditions and finding these legends, whether it be the sleepers of Ephesus that have found their way into the into the Quran, or if you're looking at Dual Karnine, which we brought that up earlier about Alexander the Great, there's a lot of this stuff. And that legend that we hear about Jesus never dying, right? I think when I read this literature, I really think this is found in Alexandrian uh, Alexander uh, Egypt literature. We know the traditions were out there in these other kind of gospels and texts that never made it into the canon. And we know that they thought Simon of Cyrene was crucified. We know that they thought other people were, were doing this. This tradition, like it's more plausible to me that a human passed this stuff down. But um, when you add all the things that he was saying that have him believing it's true, and if you could prove it wrong, um, I just don't I don't know how you would get to convince somebody when they're can already I, sold of that. You know what I mean? Can, can I get my two minutes on that one? Just because yeah. uh, obviously I know him and um funny enough we we went over I, do you know Armin? Uh Armin Navabia, Atheist Republic. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. took him over to, to Armin. I I'm on a, I I've been paneling with um Armin on uh, his Tuesday show, basically. Anyway, so I brought him over and they talked for like two hours. And he didn't right. get into his whole thing. Like he had, like with Khalil, like you can't mix him and Isa because they're two different stories. Um, and, and the way they see things is completely different. But with, with Khalil, um, he was a hard atheist. Mm -hmm. And he spent a year and a half talking to people. So he wasn't like an overnight sort of, you know, six months, whatever. He sort of looked into things. He came up with his rational arguments. And he's got a very unique position 
from anything that I've heard as to why he believed or his conversion, essentially. And so, you know, for, for him, it's a, a unique case uh, for me in terms of his rationale. Um, you know, I haven't met anyone that has uh, explained it in the same way that he has. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, the, I mean, when he says a, an hour or two to actually discuss things, he really does break it down for an hour or two and sort of goes through it. So um, without having that sort of opportunity, I wouldn't sort of just say, cool, that was a snapshot of everything. Um, no, I know that position. he, but so I would say the philosophy. I would yeah, say like an sure. hour of that would be philosophy at least. I mean, maybe more because it's all about that approach, I think. And it's like, the th there's so many reasons why I'm like, you can get a lot out of philosophy. There's so many people with philosophical approaches and there's well, well argued atheistic philosophical approaches as well. And it's just like, okay, um, what are we working with? What books that we're supposedly getting this revelation from about this supposed being? You don't need to believe in any of the literature, and I'm sure that our friend would say that, um, to think there might be something out there. But when you watch the thumbprint of humanity constantly reflecting the idea they think about God into this literature over and over, or their perception, their experiences and things like that have somehow coupled into the religious beliefs, and we're finding this in the text, I see no reason why we would draw the conclusion. And I see the, the making of the Bible the same way in the sense that it's a human creation. As I do the Quran, the difference is the Quran is aware of both traditions of Christianity and Judaism, which to me tells me they know there's problems of literature and canon and what's the scriptures, what's not the scriptures, Christians arguing with Christians, Jews arguing with Jews. They know the traditions and the issues that are going on here, and they're creating one out the gate where they have like, here's our standard text from Uthman onward out the gate. So I, I think that uh, it didn't happen like completely divorced from both of the earlier traditions. What, what, could, when you um, say kind of Uthman onwards, okay. sorry, when you say Uthman onwards, no, no, do you think it doesn't go further back than that? Oh no, you can't prove it further. I'm saying you can you can take these chains, but I'm saying in like in, as far as evidence goes, as far as we can know with high high confidence, that would be this when they standardize the text. That would be when you would know. This is why when I talk to Haitham Sidki, uh, Marayim Van Putin, and all of these other academics, which push for an early date for the Quran which I think Muslims appreciate about these scholars. But they also, if you're looking at it scientifically, empirically, they're not going to go, oh, we know absolutely that Muhammad said these words, all of these words, every word we find in the Quran comes directly from Muhammad. No, you can't prove that. There's no way to actually do that. Or even the evidence doesn't go beyond that. It is said, it is kind of said that this is going back to the prophet. And so I see no reason to say that these things don't go back to Muhammad. I have no reason to say they don't. I'm just saying we can't prove that. We, we, we don't. We don't have a way of proving that that's the case according to these academics. Okay. All right, cool. That's good. That's all. I mean, oh, no, they could good. go back no, to that's it. No, interesting. Yeah. I'd love to find an academic that has more uh, veracity with it also and present him and see, see if there's something we're missing that mm -hmm. I'm not aware of than the, the standard uh, stuff. Also, yeah, EJAZ would be great for you to talk to man he, he's got yeah, so much knowledge I, I um told him because right now in the middle of the move i'd like to talk with him and see what he has to offer but yeah what were you gonna say guys yeah i was i just want to uh, mention something about like the um like the philosophical arguments of like for god and um things of that nature um at least when it comes to like the way some people are uh because some muslims are like using this as an attack towards christianity and that's fine. You know, I mean, I, I don't think there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, but a lot of times they have like these, what I would like to say are presuppositions about God, such as God cannot be, um, cannot uh, be at a space. He cannot have a local, um, a location. Um, God cannot enter his creation and then things of that nature. And so they'll like kind of go to the Bible and they'll say, look, you know, your God is supposed to be unlimited. He enters into creation, and this is one of the logical reasons why we know that the God of the Bible is not true. And um, the odd thing I find about this way of reasoning from certain Muslims 
is when you dive into what they would call their Akita or their their theology, you know, they have different schools of thought and things of that nature. And I asked one of these Muslims, I'm just not going to name anybody specifically um, for um, just so I'm not attacking anybody. Um, but I would, you know, I asked them, you know, what if if you look into the different schools of thought, they all have something that kind of violates this, you know, this logical way of dealing with things. And they were able to say, well, then you can just kind of pick and choose um, what you like, basically, and what you don't like. And so that's why I find a, I find it a bit odd that some people can use these philosophical arguments and then jump to Islam because, like, Islam has certain texts, like, uh, where Allah came and spoke to Moses. Some Muslims would say, no, this is metaphorical, didn't really happen. Some Muslims are going to say, no, this literally happened. There's wiggle the room. Yeah, there's wiggle room. Right. And, and that's even how it always the, is. Yeah, and, and there's, you know, other verses that say Allah has a shin, Allah has ants. Some take it metaphorical, some take it physical or literal. And so the, what I'm saying is, is like, if you're already coming with like a presupposition that God has to fit into like this, this frame of work, then and then you have like different interpretations of certain texts, it could be true that Allah actually does have hands. And this would actually violate your presupposition about God having um, or God fitting in sort of this logic box. And so when I hear like some atheists using these arguments to come to Islam, I, I find that just like very odd. And um, it just seems like a, a bit like, inconsistent and um and so that's why i was that's why i was kind of wondering what your thoughts would be um as an atheist when you look at some of the arguments somebody else who came mm -hmm. from atheism and how they drew like yes this is islam are they do you see them like you may not be convinced of the argument but yeah. you may say well you know it's a fair argument it's a good argument but or are you saying, no, it's not as reasonable as you may like? I don't think like it's reasonable. People. Yeah, I don't think it's reasonable. And and to be honest with you, I'm too nice to be bold about that. That's the thing. Like, I'm just not here to try and hurt people's feelings because at the end of the day, people are going to believe in things, whether I like these arguments or think they're dumb or whatever. I just don't find that evidence to be convincing to base your entire world view on and as if this is somehow actually true where this god's going to judge you one day and you may or may not go to heaven or hell whatever it might be my epistemic requirements would be way up there like not people recite this thing and memorize a book that is poetic the quran is not just a strict literal there is poet it's poetic it's it's musical in a sense and Yes, it is sacred to them. That doesn't prove that it's holy. There are rabbis who memorize the five books of Moses. Does it prove those five books are from God? Well, if you ask Khalil, he'd say no. And my point is, how did we get from actual hardcore skepticism of saying, I'm not convinced that God exists, and using that kind of rationale, approaching world religions that I, I would say, if he was an atheist, man-made, and then become to say, God made this one, but he didn't make the previous thousands of years of religions before it, this one in particular. But I'm not going to say that because that might be a straw man because even they will go, well, Moses was a Muslim. Abraham was a Muslim. Jesus was a Muslim. And so their whole worldview is coupled with that. And that would raise even more red flags as someone who approaches history because I'm reading this historical stuff and I'm going, hold on. <laughs> That's anachronistic. Like all of the stuff you're claiming – it, like it, it's absence of evidence, evidence of absence. So I have no reason to think that that is true. And like the question I asked last night about Adam, you know, we brought up Adam and evolution. He accepts evolution, but we brought up the whole um, in Adam. He said like two, I think Adam is like 250,000 years ago. God's like gave homo sapiens a, a soul or something like that. And I was like, why would you do that? Like it's his own unique interpretation. Maybe there's a couple Muslims who want to fit science in to the Quran and like fit both worlds. And it's interesting. I'm always for modernizing things and keeping up with the current, uh, the way we understand science and stuff, no matter what I'd rather that than someone say the Bible's 7,000 years old. And, uh, this is the way, you know, we all were made from dust 7,000 years ago, but I, 
I do think, where did that leap happen? How did you go from that to this? That's why I asked the question, like, was it something of a social thing? Did you need, did you need to be part of something? Like, you know, I, it's, it's just a rational question to ask. And yeah, anyway. for sure. He had his he had his atheist crew though. He was loved in the atheist community, so he 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 was all good. He didn't have any issues um, sort of coming over. You know, uh, I think it'd be good for you guys to have a future conversation. Or, yeah, 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 I'd love yeah. that. I'd love that, and I'd love to tell him why I don't believe and what caused me to start being skeptical. You know, because it'll be a reverse story. I, I think his epistemic requirements for the things that are being written in text, you know he lowers the requirements for like concrete data to come to those conclusions. And whereas I'm like, I don't trust literature like that. I'm not going to read, you know, this guy, you know, cracked the moon in half or something. And I just going to believe that happened. And I'm looking up in the moon. Well, it's not, it didn't stay cracked. It was just a miracle temporarily. And then I'm going to be like, hold on. And I, I think everyone would do that. I, I guarantee you um, not only does Caleb do that to even Christian stuff like caleb as a christian does that to christian stuff muslims do that to certain muslim uh literature later and we all look at other worldviews and we're quick to go yeah oh, that's ridiculous are you kidding me the hindu god did what no that's bs but when it's our own it's like double standards come in special pleading comes in we like all of our critical faculties typically get like no 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 but this one i had that experience or somehow this convinced me and i'd love to know what those things were yeah caleb, that's a that's an interesting point because um oh you want to say something on there caleb go was ahead. trying to say he can know he can go and fish what he's gonna say no um so i'll just be quick um no um and and i totally understand what derek's saying and and i and i told and i realized this and this is why like some of my views on on scripture or the bible um may differ from like mainstream christianity because even though i i understand i have a bias um sometimes i say these things i'll say like i i catch myself being religious and so if i'll if i'm like looking at something like when people are like oh you know god must have given you um you know this new job you prayed for and for me i'm gonna say well you're just being religious um when you start to think like this and and so I, I understand I do this as well, but I just try to be aware of, you know, am I just being religious or am I being critical or like being right. in touch with reality? And um, so, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. And um, yeah, I try to catch myself doing those things as well. Caleb? Yeah, no, I agree. I was going to snidely remark that NASA has confirmed that the moon has never been split in half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as because as as we've been to the moon unless you're a flat earther in which don't you know they're that. being paid to say that come on yeah man. there you go it's fine were you'll they see there were yeah, they that, there were they were they yeah no although the people writing the hadith weren't either but you know that's neither here nor there uh but they they'll have these pictures of like cracks on the moon they say are cracks are really just dried up rivers um but i just think that's funny but yeah i think when it comes to to circle around it when it comes to miracle claims and religions, I think we do need to have, you know, on the one hand, I absolutely agree that we should not uh, try to have double standards. We shouldn't accept every claim. We should be skeptical. And I'd be willing to say 99 point whatever percent of them probably are fraudulent and I wouldn't accept, including many Christian ones. Um, but I think that we have to set criteria. And this is for any field, whether it's history or not, we have to set criteria in advance so that we're not arbitrarily picking it because you don't want to say, well, I like mine and I don't like yours, right? So. I mean, that's how we do history too, right? If someone's like, well, I think this is historical and they just do it because like, you need to set reasons for establishing what is likely historical, what isn't. So I think we would have to do that with testimony and with, uh, with miracle claims. So it really just depends on what it is. Like, I don't think even as a Christian that I could prove with any degree of historical confidence whatsoever that, you know, Moses crossed the Red Sea or that Elijah called down fire on the prophets of Baal or something. I just don't think the historical evidence is there. So, you know, I can would be you agree with Allison that the, that he he would I'm not going to say he would 100 percent follow that with Jesus resurrection. But he has told me in person, I, I couldn't prove to you or give you good. I couldn't give you the evidence that that's the case at all. Well, in his book, he said, and I know, you know, yeah, I've seen your interviews in his book. He says that the evidence is consistent with that, but it's not as if like he can come up with it. And he does in his book. He can come up with a natural explanation if you wanted to. It's like this is how it could have happened. But. 
like he's like, I admit if Jesus rose from the dead, yes, it makes sense why the tomb's empty. Yes, it makes sense why people saw him and converted. But here it will be a hypothetical I could also throw out. So it kind yeah. of goes away. Whereas I think with something like, I don't know, Mormonism, there's positive evidence. Like, like if you think Joseph Smith was a prophet, that wouldn't, ex- you could say, well, that explains the golden plates, but that doesn't explain why he wasn't able to replicate the 116 pages or, you know, all the other stuff. I got a question for you, Caleb, because you and me, dude, I'm telling you, man, you're like my favorite apologist guy out there. I don't even want to call you an apologist. I feel like that's kind of derogatory. Yeah, I feel like you do use it kind of derogatory. I, I do it. Just like I do. Great, but. but you bring up these miracle claims all the time. And and this is a question I have. We have a real scientist in the room right now. I, I'm, I'm not – I'm dead ass, okay? Pocket Locker 86 is Jay, okay? He is a real – he's – Two PhDs. Jay, tell us tell us about your background real quick. I want to All bring right. up. Uh, I'm an experimental evolutionary biologist. I just finished in the Lenski lab, and I have a PhD in uh, integrative biology and uh, ecology, evolutionary biology, and behavior, and I have a master's in biological anthropology, so like that nerdy Excellent. stuff that uh, Gutsick Gibbon does. Thanks so much for having me on, Derek. Appreciate it. Of course, man. And we're gonna have to do a special show. Where yeah, we yeah, yeah. We are evolution. actually. I just want to tell you real quick. I'm. Uh, they scheduled the Hoven debate for me on the 29th on uh, Standing for Truth. So oh, you need to come through and get me ready. You gotta. You gotta get me through okay. the Derek, the Derek School of Podcasting, so I can be ready for that. I got Honestly, you. You're debating Hoven. That's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a bad idea. I know. I, the, the, <laughs> the, the, correct, the best strategy is don't debate Ken Hovind. That was the first. That yeah, was the first I, mistake. <laughs> yeah, you know, he used to be really funny, and he still is funny. But I feel like just with the stuff that's come out about his like workplace and his wives, I feel like it's almost just like I kind of don't even think people should associate with him anymore. But that's just yeah, my, yeah. I, I, I think. Uh, well, I'm ho- I'm hoping to make that clear. So yeah, no, you're, I we'll, we'll you're taking on Doctor Dinosaur. Dr. Dino. Yeah. Dr. Dino, that's it. Do- Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But look, yeah. Caleb, this was what I was going to say. And yeah, I, go, I, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Derek. Sorry. No, you're good. I wanted to bring up this point. If we could show why people, like psychologically, or like show the phenomenology as to why humans naturally have experiences or assume miracles are the case. You know how you said earlier, like 99.9% or 99.5%. Right. Like the other 0.5 really, like we may not know the answer to it. We may be like, okay, uh, people believe it is, but it's like we may not know what happened. We can't explain it or something like that. And it leaves open this room for belief. My question is if we can show scientifically – why humans do believe this stuff, why they make this stuff up. Why is this? And it's all natural. Let's just say we're able to say these are things we just built into our evolutionary experience. Why would we want, why are we leaving um, this splinter of open opportunity? Kind of like maybe it might be true this time. One in a trillion chance. This might be it. Why are we leaving that window open and assuming that miracles are the case rather than saying, like scooby-doo in every episode i love to use this analogy who is the culprit like what is the natural phenomena that explains this data because we know that's true we know there's natural phenomena in the world we don't know we don't have that kind of uh confidence to say this is miraculous or we like mary apparitions or you know you showed the eucharist thing heart beating the other day or whatever right, right, literally yeah. make out what the hell that was i was like what and this is supposed yeah. to be a miracle could be a, it could be a flashlight right yeah right like why do we why do we start like that why don't we start skeptical and and approach it that way yeah well i'm not saying that we shouldn't start by i didn't know if you wanted pot locker to say something i know you'd called them earlier but um, I just I, wanted to mention we had a – Yeah, yeah, yeah no, oh. I appreciate it. Go ahead and answer. I'll follow up with you. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree that we should be skeptical. And that's why I tried to say earlier I think we should have criteria. So you're looking for things like um, how many witnesses are there? Was it just one guy? Um, did these people have – are there third parties attesting to this? Or are these only people who are already predisposed to believe? Um, how, how long after the events was this recorded and written down? Um, stuff like that, you know, and that's pretty objective. You know, it's not like a, it has to be declared by a pope or something like where it's obviously arbitrary. Like it's that seems pretty general in terms of epistemology, in terms of what we're looking for. Um, the person doesn't have obvious self-interest. So if it's Kenneth Copeland and he's making money off of it, uh, it's probably a good reason to be a little bit suspicious of it. Right. Or uh, J- Joseph Smith having 14 or how, I don't know, 40 wives, however many he had. 
So, you know, there's it, it, there, all of these we would have to look at carefully and examine that. And that's so when I'm the book I'm doing right now, I'm trying to be as careful as I can. And I actually try to give a natural explanation for each of them. And sometimes I can and sometimes I like legitimately can't. And so it just depends, like at least with the data that I have. Um, and so I'm only doing ones in that in that case where I have like really good medical records on on that. And so sometimes it's like, well, maybe this could be a misdiagnosis. Maybe there was faulty memory here. And there's some cases where it's like, well, if I'm looking at the documents, this not an easy one. So uh, I think you just take all that to account. And now in terms of like, why do we believe? And like, are we predisposed to that? I agree that we are, I, I actually am hoping to write on that someday as well. Um, I do think that we are predisposed to believe in the supernatural for evolutionary reasons. And I'm sure um, the, the one who has a PhD here in that field could speak to that more than I can. Um, but I don't necessarily see that as problematic if one supposes that evolution is a um, is an is a good mechanism for generating belief. I think I would say that all of our beliefs, um, the belief that the natural world exists, all of this comes from evolution because we have an environment. I believe light exists because it's advantageous for me to believe light exists and I can see it reflecting my eyes. So that's fine, but I don't have a reason to distrust my senses. So if someone gave me a good argument to say, oh, here, here's a defeater, here's why this isn't reliable, then that would be good. But I think on initial premise, if you have an experience, you are warranted to believe it unless there's good evidence against it. Just as if someone said, well, you know, if, if a blind per person told me, well, actually light doesn't exist, you're just, this is an illusion and I'm the one who's right. Well, I think we'd have to look at the evidence to that point. But so it just depends on what it is. It depends on what criteria we're using. And it depends on how much you think evolution um, brings it about. So that's my somewhat long winded answer. I want to hear Jay and then I want to hear Derek because I know Derek has sure. probably something to say here. And then we got to get some people saved here because they've been super chatting <laughs> and it's oh. hot. It's hot <laughs> where they're at. We got to get them out of that place, purgatory at least. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. So uh, for me, obviously, I come out a little bit of a different perspective, but it's a, it's a really interesting thing. I think that um, uh, one is I think people are making a lot of progress and certainly sort of this idea of the evolution of religion is something I'm very interested in, right, where we can sort of, you know, use the different scientific tools we have to sort of try to trace back the history of our beliefs and, you know, which beliefs come out of this this one and, and, and those sort of lineages, I think that that's uh, super promising. At the same time for me, and again, I say it's easy as a scientist because it's sort of a professional courtesy, um, I, I think we're there. And I think we've been there. You know, I think if you're honest about the evidence we have for human evolution, the, uh, the honest about the evidence we have for the natural processes that we do understand, um, any sort of real honest assessment of that, and again, just taking science for what it is, if I like the science that gives me medicine, I should be consistent in liking that science other places. And if, you know, science says, you know, you Occam's razor, you don't add things where you don't need it, then you say, hey, look, everything we've been able to explain without all of this seems like the honest way to proceed is to assume that, you know, we won't need that going forward any more than we've needed it thus far. Um, but I think this sort of thought experiment, which I do think is well thought out uh, in contrast to so many thought experiments I hear. Um, I think what would be interesting is that if we found that location of the brain and we, we pinned it down and we said, this is it, and we've got the genes forward and we can see it emerge in the fossil record and, you know, we can remove it and people don't believe anymore and, and, the, and the whole bit, right? I think people would just double down. I think it would be like all the other things that they said, if you, if you figured this out or found this, we'd let it go, and they just won't. Um, they would just say, oh, my goodness, you found the gene that God put in us, and he designed us. That, that's the image of God gene uh, right there. And you, just, and you just found it, and amen, hallelujah. And then the other thing that struck me, and, and that's what I've gotten to when I've thought about it before, but when you just asked about it, something different hit me, which is sort of like, having an explanation isn't a solution for the problem, right? Just because someone murdered somebody, we found the killer, we found the murder weapon, uh, we convicted the person, we put them in prison, that doesn't bring back the, the victim to life, right? So even if we found that, we would just be founding sort of a natural explanation that says this is indeed how our brain works. It wouldn't necessarily do the heavy lifting, which is to how to get our brains to not work like that. Right. Right. Like that would still be a problem, even if we had sort of identified the source. Right. Like, oh, great. We found the source. But 
the, that all that does is confirm what we already knew that we're religious. It's in the brain. It's a, it's a product of you know human cognitive processes. Great. Now what? Right. It's still where we go with that. And then the final thing I'll say is that we tend to want to think about these things selectively. Uh, in other words, what is the advantage to being religious? And we go, oh, it would have been better to, you know, all work together and assume if we work together, we could, you know, help each other out. And if we did that and we avoided angering gods by violating one another, we could outcompete the populations who were, you know, didn't have these beliefs or whatever. Um, and that's really important to think about. And a lot of people are thinking about that. You're just thinking about cultural evolution and social evolution. But it's also important to remember that evolution isn't all about natural selection. Some of it's chance um, and some of it's history. So it could just be the case that we are the descendants of the populations who happen to survive. And, you know, a lot of stuff like their brain power and all of the cool stuff that they did to help them survive in the environment mattered. And religion is just something that they happen to bring along with them, just like certain, you know, things are green for no reason. And, you know, certain things are why do you have three legs instead of seven? Because I'm part of a lineage that evolved three legs instead of seven. Right. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be that religion did something or gave us some advantage. We just are mostly descendant from religious hominids. And that's why it's such an interesting question. Right. Because finding it wouldn't necessarily answer all of those questions. It would just raise more of these uh, sort of very good questions. And so sorry to touch on all that, but it really did sort of flood me with uh, different thoughts about it. Great. It's a great, great question. Thanks, Jay. Derek. Um, I, I first of all, I want to say, Jay, um, what why are we not friends? Like uh, <laughs> I don't know, because I watch your stuff and I'm a big fan. So right. so. Uh, <laughs> I'm now a big fan of you. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, get in touch. Pocket Locker 86. Hit me up Gmail or on 86. anything. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere anywhere you can find me. Okay, cool. Be happy cool. to chat. We'll set something I up. I just love your answer there. And Thanks, I, and I, I love appreciate what that. you said about how in a Also, I'm going to smoke. Ways, Hopefully that doesn't make you not want to be my friend. But uh, go ahead. What, what, what wouldn't make me want to be your friend? I'm a, I'm a he's, pothead. He's going to he smoke. He smokes weed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think That's you're. I think you're now. I think you guys are best gonna, friends now. Jay, forget what I said. I <laughs> We're better friends now. But yeah, go that. ahead, Derek. <laughs> That's so bad. But no, Derek, what no. what do you think about? Well, first of all, of course, Jay's response. But my question and the way I'm probing it is like, if we were able to observe and see why and how this phenomena works within our brains and by natural processes. And we're like, hold on. We know why people are like prone to hope or suspect miracles happen you know like what would be your response to this and maybe also what the jay said and then we got to save some people with these super chats i've been saying that and their their screams are literally entering my ears right now so please what would be my response to that well yeah to me jay uh and and caleb whatever you want to say when when it comes to that topic if if we could demonstrate just why it is yeah like we we get you we put you in mri and we can see the whole thing and we got the genes and we can emerge it in the fossil record the whole nine i mean color me shocked (laughs) i mean i just wouldn't be surprised in the in the least um you know you listen to somebody like michael Shermer, and uh he he goes into this very kind of thing why people believe weird things um, I think he covers it from more of a, well, I think it's, it's, he is a neuroscientist. Is he not? I don't know his background. Yeah. I've heard him speak a little bit and that's an important to note that it's not my area of expertise, right? I'm sort of giving my sort of guesses based on my education and experience, but right. certainly would love to hear from somebody who actually is deep in the weeds on that day in and day out. I mean, we don't know everything in that regard, but we know a lot, <laughs> And I, and I dare say we know enough. Um, it's, I, I just I wondered if, if we're thinking, I, this was what, what I was wondering. I was looking for miracles. I was hoping for something. To, there were times I prayed so hard and hoped I saw an angel out of the left side of my eye or I saw something. I literally had these like wild, hopeful, I really wanted something to happen as a believer. And I now looking back, if I'm critical of myself and my experience, I'm like, 
this was something in here. So I was driven and wired to want this and like was trying to get that. Mm -hmm. I would try to fast. I love eating. So I didn't want to not eat. I would try to fast. I would try to get a, a, a religious experience every time I went to church. I tried to have an experience. And I wonder if there is, if we were able to explain these naturally, completely all of these experiences to some degree, and some of them are with outside phenomena, something natural might happen that we don't know what it is, or it may be something we don't explain, but we already are assuming it's the cultural ontology that answers that question. Oh, Mary apparition. Oh, it's Jesus Christ in a, in a Eucharist. It's, it's through the worldview. It's leprechauns or it's, you know, it's a Krishna and Hindu, you know, like it's always something like that. And I wonder if we are able to answer those things naturally. And we probably are. Why do people still want to believe those things and will educating people get them to ever stop thinking in miraculous terms? Pretending the worldview of – let's just pretend these worldviews are completely natural for the sake of argument, Caleb, and there is no God, no Jesus, none of that. And it, let's say it was reducible to natural phenomena in the brain and exterior, okay? But people believe it. Will people stop believing it because we were able to educate them and show them that these are natural phenomena? Of I course so. not. Of right. course not. Look at how demonstrably obvious – evolution is doesn't matter you know not to the true believers um people will readily deny it just as easily as they do evolution um it, it's it's it, it just honestly i think it comes down to what that person um deep down wants to believe uh, reality is no match for cognitive dissonance and the sheer will to believe. So, no, I don't think it would make a dent. Hmm. I actually agree with that in terms, not not with the conclusion, but I agree that I don't think it would stop people from believing because I think that there are advantageous reasons for believing in terms of evolutionary, re like, you know, without getting too much into it, the, there are studies that show that prayer improves people's mental health and that um, religious communi community is kind of what holds people together and that if you look at you'd be surprised how many studies there are where it has people are di are they are more distrusting of atheists than they are of religious people in fact i, I think mean, that you, but you wouldn't that be because the the project i want you to answer me i don't i'm seriously yeah. not trying to i really want to get this point isn't it because atheists are the oddball everybody yes. believes so we're yes. like already it's like a black man in a community jay you're the token black guy here so i just have to point that out um it's like if you're in a community of white people, look at how they act. They're all freaking out because there's a black guy in the community. And it's like, hold on. What's wrong? Like I live 50-50 where I'm at. Like what's the problem? Where they're at, that's not normal. Well, it's not normal for people to be so critical that they don't believe. And so they're like distrusted or whatnot. Am I right? right? Yeah. No, I think that's true. I think it's partially tribalism in that way. And it just goes like along. Like I think another reason why uh, people evolved a belief in God is uh, because – and they've done studies about this too, is what is having a belief that there's an entity watching you will keep people in check easier. Like if, even if I'm not watching you, God's watching you, right? right. They've done studies where they'll have a kid in a room. It's like, okay, here's a thing of cookies. I'm going to leave. And then the kid eats it. And then they do was I'm going to leave, but there's an invisible uh, fairy watching you. And if, if, if you eat it, they're going to tell me. And they're less likely to do it if you tell them that there's someone watching them. Right. This is true. Darren, Darren Brown, the mentalist just did this. And he had four participants in the room that had this ring. You know that like uh, that Dr. Buzz when you like hit the – and it shocks Oh, yeah, you. yeah. Okay, well, this ring, if the ring, you got to try and get it around the loops. And if it touches, it buzzes, and you're supposed to hit it every time to count how many buzzes. So they just go into the room. The guy about a minute in says, hey, I got to use the restroom real quick. Just make sure you hit the buzzer whenever you hit it. Like, no problem. No problem. Walks out. Boom, like they, they're caught on camera, hidden camera, lying. Like every three or four buzzes, they finally tap it. And then at the end, they tell them how many. And they said they only had like seven, but they did 18. They buzzed 18. The other group, all of them did not lie once. Because as soon as they went in, they saw what the experiment was. They're like, here's this weird couch that like they said is haunted. And that there's like a spirit that's inside of this couch. And it's always watch them it's weird superstition anyway go ahead and do this and they start about a minute and then he's like i gotta use the restroom when they left not a single one of them lie 
even though I have like the guys like I made this shit up. Like it's not true at all. The human <laughs> still did what he was supposed to do or she was supposed to do. And they were all honest. And Darren Brown did it on a show called Faith, uh, Faith and Fear. That's on YouTube. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of Darren Brown. I also so huge. In general, did you ever see his faith healing one? Uh, Miracles for Sale, I think it was. Yeah, it's a good show. Yes, 100%. It's like uh, Voltaire said, even if there were no God, it would be necessary to invent him. And mm. I'm not certain that I disagree with that, surprisingly. Mm. Yeah. Because the general public is dumb. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I agreed with the first part, and then you, you had that second <laughs> You know, I don't disagree that people are generally dumb, but not in the allocation of that. But before we move on to Super Chat, I was just going to do a book okay. plug with this. Is just, You should have him on your show. Justin Baird, I believe he's at Oxford, a uh, child psychologist called Born Believers. And he basically argues that infants have a belief in the supernatural from a very early age uh, without having to be taught it. So that's kind of correlative to what we were talking about. I and imagine- also, I want to throw in something quickly and irrelevant. Uh, maybe it's fun, Right. Like maybe if 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 we could take it apart, right? Like, cause would it maybe we part of what we're getting at is what was the pre Superman and the I recently joked about this on stream, right? I said with all the uh, the plague going on and all the shit with racism and uh, Donald Trump leading an insurrection, guys, it's not that the world has gone to hell in a handbasket; it's that we're in the middle of a superhero movie. And just any any moment now, like the Marvel <laughs> Avengers are gonna come along with the cure to COVID and stop fight. You know what I mean? They're just gonna save us because that's that's part of it too, right? Is isn't it fun to believe in magic? You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. Also, because media is more prevalent. I mean, imagine if they had like media back in I don't know any period of history. It'd be terrifying. When, Gen- when Genghis Khan was alive or something, the Roman Scott <laughs> yeah, breaking news every day. But we just have that access to information where people like are aware of what's how bad the world is. But I don't think it's actually objectively worse than it was i think it's just we know more about it and that's what's scary all right we're gonna push through getting people out of hell rob the atheist scriptures ig genesis is a good example many people claim allegory but do we pick and choose which parts is original sin a metaphor did jesus die for a metaphor if literal biology takes issue with adam and eve so obviously you you know it'd be incest from day one you know (laughs) How would that work genetically, uh, Jay? If 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 Adam and Eve, like, were the first, two, let's just imagine they weren't made from the same stuff because that's already a big red flag. She comes from his rib, and you got to wonder if that has any genetic, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. What's going on with that, right? Let, let's get past the hard part and then start yeah. saying they're two totally different specimens. Let's just pretend, and then they have kids, and those kids sleep with those kids, and here we are today. Yeah, it just I don't I don't think we I don't think we get there, right? But what's interesting for me is that I moved all the way through this whole spectrum, right? I think I grew up and you know, I come from like Pentecostal families, so they're very all of this is literal and means everything. I went to Catholic school, right? So Catholic school, you might have theology and biology next to each other, right? And then theology, they break it down, how it's all allegory and it's borrowed from previous creation myths. And basically we're taught, this is our Catholic creation myth. Oh, and biology, that's the natural history. And here's the, the, the scriptural, you know, spiritual history. And so I had to be taught that in college that there was this conflict. And then I became like an atheist Christian where I was a Christian, but everything was allegory. Jesus might've been an atheist. Jesus might've not been real. And all that was fine, and I was still a Christian, right? Because then it was like, oh, the point is to point to us an example that couldn't really be an example because he wasn't actually real. And then dying for our sins was really speaking to the ultimate selflessness that we're all called to for the eternal cause of the human race that continues beyond us, which is greater than ourselves. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Right? So you go through all that. And now I've seen people where you guys were talking about this before, where some people are like, Oh, no, they're Adam and Eve literalist and nothing has ever evolved. Some people are. There is evolution, but not uh, hominin evolution, right? And then some people are, you know, it starts with Adam. So there's this whole chart somebody showed me the other day with the sort of spectrum of all the where do you take all this to be literal or metaphorical or not. So it's all much deeper than I um, thought. And one thing I just want to finally say is, Um, I don't think naturalism is ever going to solve this ever, 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 because that's what it's not meant to do. One thing my teaching mentor reminds me is if you don't accommodate somebody's uh, theological, you know, 
explanations and uh, you know uh, stories, you just don't take their theology seriously. Right, but and if that's. You, I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're great. I was just gonna say if you if you take their theology seriously, then oh, that's just the way God did it, and He can interrupt it at any moment if He wants to, and the, these people got it wrong, but Jesus found my car keys. If you take that idea seriously. Of course, it's possible, and there's nothing science can say to show that it isn't. That's why I try to engage with with the commenting in their theological realms. And I think, I hope, Caleb, I know I'm like the meme of the Christian apologist on Facebook in the pictures, so, but, yeah. <laughs> but you got to at least, I, as an atheist, as a skeptic on the other side, right, you got to pat me on the back for at least – engaging in the material engaging in the theology most atheists just go call the atheist experience just go call these college shows they're not engaging in your theology at all at least we're doing that and while i do it i'm going if i grant there's an empty tomb yeah exactly <laughs> you know what i mean at least i'm playing with you we're having fun in the sandbox i might throw dirt at you you might throw it back at me but we're playing together i don't like it personally it's not my thing to just go how stupid is that sandbox that you're in ha, i'm gonna go play over here like i want <laughs> to engage and show you why i think even with the text we have we don't have sufficient reasons to believe even with the text and the theology and the visions and appearances and what is said, the doubting traditions, the whole nine, that we have the confidence we should unless it's coupled with personal revelation and an actual vision or experience itself. That's my opinion. And I uh, engage with it for that reason. You know what I mean? Derek, I, I don't think it's an unreason. I don't think it's an unreasonable position to have. So. Thank you. Derek, I'm here to learn from you how to do this YouTube thing and how to pound out these super chats. <laughs> but I, I will quickly add this, man. Uh, at least what you're doing is different. And I think what we're talking about really argues for a different kind of counter apologetics because it says it isn't about the arguments. It isn't about the evidence. It isn't about the naturalism. Maybe playing with the theology is one way. My thing is if we think it's social ties, let's play at the social ties. Maybe telling people, are you really honest? Is this the most honest thing? Is this the most honest way? Right, because I'm trying to pull at your heartstrings where I think being seen as honest by other people might be more important to you than uh, rejecting biology. One well, thing I've done with my uh, family recently, because I was concerned about them going to church and exposing themselves to COVID, my grandparents got really sick, was I kind of put it on them like, hey, my mom's gonna move in and take care of you guys. And wouldn't it be a shame if you brought home COVID to her when she moved and sacrificed her retirement to take care of you? And I literally put in there this equation where I said dying for Jesus equals bad for family, right? Now, that's real raw. But the reason my family received it, because my mom said, I hate the way you communicate, and it's like the worst. But I understand your intent because you were trying to act out of love. And what I was trying to do is show if you part of the reason you do this is because you think that's what's going to make your family honor you and remember you well. If we poke at that and say, no, we'll say this is the reason you were too silly. And this is the thing you wouldn't give up for the family. And this is the re right. And now right. all of a sudden my mom said, oh, no, they're having the conversation. They're not going to put us in that situation. They're thinking about retiring. Right. So people tell us we're doing the stuff that's way out there. Or like you said, get in the sandbox and play with it. But these other approaches, maybe there's something to them because that seems to get at what's actually keeping them in the face more than these other things that they don't seem to really care about. I know Derek has something he could say on this uh, super chat. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think I, I've seen this this idea among more progressive or sophisticated uh, modern theologians that uh, you don't have to take the story of Adam and Eve literally, that it is just a metaphor for sin or evil that does exist in the world regardless. Uh, and that Christ died for that. As, as an atheist who studies the Bible, I have a problem with that because that's not at all what the New Testament says. Just read Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul absolutely regards Adam as an actual historical person. He speaks of him as the protos anthropos, the first man. There is no hint in Paul that Adam is just a metaphor. Uh, Luke's genealogy, 
absolutely ties, you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus genealogy all the way back to Adam. And he, he's doing that for a theological reason, but that doesn't alter the fact that he means this quite literally. Does this so, not say, does this not speak volumes to you, Derek, that we have philosophical apologists like William Lane Craig who are trying to take this kind of allegorical approach while their own scriptures are saying something else in light of this. And yet it's science. I it's, think it's that's cafeteria Christianity. You're just picking and choosing what you like. Like, of course the death and resurrection. Now we're going to take that literally. Right. But forget what uh, Paul or Luke might say about Adam. It's just cherry picking. It's, it's taking what you like and discarding what you don't like. And it's obvious you're just making it up as you go to try and make it fit with your modern sensibilities. And it's disgusting to do it in the name of scholarship. Go ahead. Now, Caleb, what do you think about that idea? So here we have William Lane Craig, right? We know he takes the scientific approach. He thinks the earth is billions of years. The universe is, you know, billions of years old. Um, evolution's true. Probably mm -hmm. takes a theistic evolution approach. But my point is, he is saying Adam is myth. But the New Testament authors don't believe that about Adam. It seems they actually believe this guy really is the reason we're in this conundrum to begin with. Um, don't you think that that a fundamentalist has, and I'm not, this is the first time I'm only going to pat him on the back a little. Fundamentalists are trying to be more consistent with what they're seeing the text is trying to say about Adam. So they take it literally. And at least William Lane Craig's trying to be more honest with science and his philosophy and things like that. What do you say to that? Yeah, I, I, I would say that I'm sure the young earth creationists are going to soundbite that and then try to, try to use that later on. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think that Craig, I haven't read his book on Adam yet. I think that he thinks Adam was like a homo habilis like 250,000 years ago. I don't think he thinks it's completely oh. metaphor. Um, like certain elements he does. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that I would agree. He's still there. saying no to Luke. He's still saying, but anyway, go ahead. I think that, well, yeah, I think that Paul and Luke probably thought Adam was a real, I mean, well, Luke is probably Gentile, but Paul was a Jew. And I think that he would have thought that like if you had told him Adam didn't exist, but I don't think that's really analogous to the resurrection because Paul at least claims that he was a witness to that. Whereas Paul doesn't, Paul doesn't know Adam. Paul is just saying what he was raised with, with the belief that's been passed on for thousands of years at that point. So yeah, I, I, I don't take this idea of scripture where it's like inerrancy of God, like putting information to their head, like how, you know, Muhammad received ver verbatim through Gabriel, God's revelation. I don't think it's like that at all. So Jane, or not James, Jude can reference the book of Enoch or the assumption of Moses, right? And maybe he thought that was historical and I don't, but um, so I don't think you have to necessarily take that view. But again, I, people like Philo and even some church fathers, I don't know how they viewed Adam specifically, but they did view much of Genesis as allegorical. So the question I, I have is this, if it, Derek brought this up, I thought this was good in that. If you say, like, for example, you don't think those are historical, uh, William Lane Craig probably doesn't think Adam in the same sense is historical, which would, no matter how you chop this up, he could be the 250,000 year old homo sapien. Sure. It doesn't matter. Okay. Probably. Yeah. He could say that. It doesn't matter. The point I'm getting at is, is he's disagreeing with Luke. Luke's genealogy goes back to a guy that's connected four or 5,000 years ago, whatever. Um, my point is, is like, if this isn't, if Jesus is dying in the place of the sin of mankind, or depending on how you want to understand your soteriology here. But the point is he's dying for the sins that were committed under Adam. And is this an Adam from 250,000 years ago? Or is this like the genealogy of Luke, their theology in their gene genealogical approach is fitting into their theology of the death and resurrection of Jesus. I don't see how we can fit this like old, evolutionary model for adam and then yet still try to pretend jesus died for those sins for those people two hundred fifty thousand years before that. you get what i'm trying to get at like it's a stretch in my opinion yeah i mean that's see this is where, where it gets difficult in terms of what's your view of original sin what's your view of the fall and all that in terms of like is they fall a single event is the fall a description of man in general that's where it gets complicated was adam a was adam the first human being or was he not the first but he was the first quote unquote priest in terms of God gave him like you're responsible for everyone here kind of thing. And there's different models. I don't take a particular position. I don't know. It's possible Adam and Eve didn't exist. I'm not saying that one way or the other. I don't think historically, I, I, I'll do a lot of flack for saying this. I don't think historically I, I could 
be overly confident about the existence of anyone prior to maybe King David. Um, not, even I know that's what the 10 dots still kind of debated, mm -hmm. but um, I think I, I would say probably David and maybe, I don't know, Isaiah or one of the prophets would probably be the furthest back. I think we could be fairly confident historically, um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, but I, I think there are other reasons for affirming that. So I don't know the position I add in, but I think most theologians you would ask wouldn't be bothered by that. And, and I, I, I think even historically, I mean, you know, even since Darwin, uh, he didn't get as much flack from uh from Christians as people may thought. Even one of his best friends was a botanist. I can't remember his name. Uh, had no issue with with that. So yeah, I don't see uh, I don't see evolution as necessarily being the uh, defeater that I think a lot. You of people talk about Asa Gray. I might have been. He had letters, and then he was a. I don't know. I don't know. That but, sounds but yeah, right. But yeah, yeah, I don't. Okay. I'm terrible with names. That sounds right. Um, but I don't know. I would also just appeal to. If I wanted to, if I had time, I would also just try to pull an Alvin Plantinga and try to pull the uh, the evolutionary argument against naturalism and be like, oh, actually, evolution's bad for atheism, but that that would take a while. So uh, <laughs> I could just yes, back. it would. Yeah, Caleb, did you slip in there that uh, Paul was a witness to the resurrection? He claimed. I said Paul claimed to be a witness to. Well, he claimed to have seen the risen Jesus, whatever that means. Well, I mean, if he claimed it. Huh? I, I said I think I said he I don't know if I said he was one or he made. The I knew Derek. Him. I knew Derek's right. face. He nodded when you said that one like this, and I knew he was waiting to say something on that. Real <laughs> yeah. quick, crypto. I still club. love you. I still love you. Yeah, that's okay. Send him a check. Um, say it crypto. Back, Caleb. Crypto coin chasing. Yeah, thank you for the super chat. Does liking support not asking about child support? Child child abuse. Child support. Um, I do want to just make a point. Uh, I don't know anyone's case, and I don't. I don't find it worthy of internet uh, bringing up anything. I have a background, by the way, if you don't know, because I'm not afraid to talk about my background or what I've done. But I just want to make the point, like, if, if, if someone's asking questions and I think that they're purposely trying to stir the pot or be disrespectful or derogatory, I'm not entertaining that. So I hope that that answers the question. That goes for anyone. I like to suppose people are innocent till proven guilty. People have been charged. And we're found innocent. I don't know the case. I'm not interested in the case. It's none of my business. Um, and just saying, everyone on this panel, they may be friends or acquaintances of, of mine, but they don't represent me or Myth Vision. And so this is kind of an open forum where I allow people to come in. Um, I have had hiccups in the past where we've had situations with Robert Price. Things like that have happened. I'm not ashamed to bring it up, but I don't like to dwell on it. Uh, people take sides on things. Me and Robert Price talk now. I mean, I talk. Oh, to that's him. great. Derek, I'm really yeah. glad to I actually said in all of that that I hope you guys, you know, find a way in your own time to, yeah. to do it. And I supported you through that whole thing. When you first came out and you were like, this is what's up. I'm, I'm going to keep having Robert on because he's my guy. I was like, great. I'm with you 100%. And then when you changed your mind, I was like, great. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, get it. um, yeah. I, I'd also just say I think this is a problem in our community. Uh, we try to take strong moral stances, but I, I get this thing where it's like you, they name and shame people all the time, and I'll be like, "Oh, I want to play this video from this person." I'm like, "Oh, well, you're supporting their," and I'm like, "Well, I didn't even know about that, and why are you blindsiding me with this on my stream?" And and I don't right. care, right? I, I'm not. It's none of my business. And I tell people all the time, I've done really bad things in the past. So I don't want to create a culture where everywhere I go, I've got to sit here and explain all my dirty deeds just mm -hmm. to participate in the community. And I hate to say this, but what if one of those people committed suicide or something? That's true. Yeah. Like, like of, uh, it would be like, well, guess what? When they found an atheist skeptic community, they thought they finally had somebody and they had an anonymous name on the Internet and they thought they could just participate and try to build the social life. And we were like, nah. There's nowhere you can go where we let you forget your past. And so who are we when we become less gracious than the people who are constantly tell us we're going to hell and there's unforgivable sins and there's things you can never be redeemed from? I'm just like, nah, I'd rather be the community of trying to get better and second chances. So it yeah. irritates me when people use my channel to try to shame other people. I'm not around for that. And uh, maybe that's how you're feeling, too. But I just I just want to support well, you and saying, like, we're just not out here for that. Me and Bob are tight now. We're good. I just choose right now not to have him on. You mm -hmm. know, when it comes to myth vision, we were close to home. Everything was business orientated. Me and him had a like going on. You know, that's how we had things going. And me and him are cool with that. We've talked about it. We're friends, everything. We're supposed to have Holy Ghost chicken before I move, you know. Uh, but oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, I've I've 
literally made the decision right now that I'm not interested in bringing that onto Myth Vision. I want to keep that separate. Uh, oftentimes, po politics have come up, and it it almost seems inevitable in the teachings that we've had where it gets brought up somehow. I'm not going to say it wouldn't happen in the future where he'd be able to stay away from doing that, but uh right now i'm not so sure that that's a decision i would want to make you know also but it goes it goes with the territory i think the goal if we're not going to be a echo chamber is to interact with people who disagree with us about very important things and i think part of that is we believe that belief motivates behavior so my mm -hmm. expectation is people who i strongly disagree with have probably done things I also strongly disagree with. Right. And I'm also guilty of those things because I used to be on the other side of that fence. So I'm going into it. I should have the expectation. I'm going to have to show some grace. Can we Absolutely. just also separate, you know, the scholar from the scholarship as well, or the art, artist from the art. I, there are people who produce art and music that I like that I don't necessarily like them as a person. I think you can say, say the same thing for academia, right? You can appreciate some now granted i don't really uh necessarily agree with almost anything bob price has ever written but i think he's a great guy is a, he, he yeah. a nice yeah. person uh, and there are other people who you know like i don't know richard purvo i don't know but he i've well, heard very well respected common very respectful well, he was convicted of stuff but he very respected scar on axe and got in trouble for some stuff but I, that doesn't mean i wouldn't like cite him or wouldn't yeah you know, I, I use him all the time yeah, <laughs> yeah but i did but i can but you can do that without promoting certain other things that's um, true so just i just i just want to say that that it was so mind you like every other day we were doing a video it was like yeah. he became the poster child for everything i did and my views became his views and then he went public and i felt like vomit was poured all over the youtube and there were some bad things that were said in my opinion and uh and i have had academics in the past who've told me like i not plat you can't take your platform seriously look at the kind of stuff that you know is going on and so there's a reason that you know he hasn't been able to get you know uh into any institution in terms of teaching and he has two phds so it's one of those things but nobody represents me it was my whole point with that whole live that there was a couple super chats is nobody represents my channel anymore but me and I think that's a safe bet that nobody in whatever they bring to the table is going to get me uh, mm -hmm. in a hot spot because you don't represent my channel. You know, it, it, it's really that that's a safer bet. But last, it, thing, hold on, last thing I'll say that for you read yeah. that is just is it funny that politics is so much more divide? Like you make a channel where you're literally, well, not not in, I wouldn't say intentionally, but like you're literally tearing apart what. 30% of the world's population believes and holds it dearly to them. <laughs> yet they're bothered because you don't you say things against Dude, them. dude, you're not lying. Like, that just seems weird to me. People are like, oh, you can tell me that heaven isn't real and that I, that uh, all that stuff and deny my salvation, but don't you dare try to say that so and so is this. And then, then yeah. that's the problem. That's just funny to me how people take that as uh -huh. if that's a bigger priority than eternal life, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. I can't believe you did that, Derek. Uh, hey, thank you so much for the hey, yeah. Paul Kipling. Apo apologetics is important for deconfusing the distortions of meaning that occur through losses in translation. Wit Wittgenstein made a whole system about it. Do you know about this? I don't know who Wittgenstein is. I don't know if I should. I, I'd feel bad if I'm. <laughs> it's like a well-known person that I don't know, but. Paul, I don't know who Wittgenstein is or what what the system that he's trying to do or make out of it. I'd be interested to know. But, uh, but Derek, isn't this Ludwig the Wittgenstein is German. a British philosopher who worked primarily in logic, philosophy of mathematics, and philosophy of mind? And go. I was just going to say, missing the plot when you tell me about deconfusing the distortions of the perfect word of a perfect God, but maybe I'm just basic. Oh, Kickling's back. I, I didn't notice this. Derek, you're missing the point. All knowledge is a refinement of the same truth. Natural phenomena is the same thing being talked about in antiquity. What? I I I guess it's like I'm limited on my my understanding of what's actually trying to be conveyed here. Is he saying that they that gods are natural and that these are natural things they're attributing to God, or is he trying to act like a pantheist where everything is God and it's all natural? Like I'm just I don't know because he's back yeah. here. You making the distinction that there's a difference between nature from phenomena. You are already starting from a deeply flawed understanding of mysticism. So, so yeah, it sounds like a, almost a pantheistic or maybe like um, 
panentheistic way of like trying to say nature is that's how it comes up like where it's like the supernatural natural the same thing yeah i was that way i would i would always say god works through natural means meaning whatever you were discovering in nature you were just discovering you know how god did it and i just eventually realized that the god part wasn't needed that's where i'm at yeah that's actually where i'm at right now but what were you gonna uh hey yeah 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 i'm sorry man uh no 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 i uh i just want to say because i'm uh had it in the house um i appreciate the conversation um and i appreciate you know all that you do uh i think it's very interesting um like i said i'm a christian i see a lot of your content um i've um uh, i listened to a decent amount of it and i and i still do um so like i said it's good um of course, as a Christian, <laughs> I'm going to say it, this, but it's funny. You um, act like you don't really want to say it anymore. You kind of want to be like, you know, I'm kind of like a skeptic now. I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I mean, no, I mean, I've, I've heard like I've heard some of the arguments, but like your approach and the way you like bring scholars on is very unique and awesome. And I think Thank that's you. good. And um, and so I, I've heard some of them. I, and like I said, I, I can see why you make some of the arguments that you do. Um, I don't obviously when it comes to some of the conclusions that are being made, I don't always agree with them. Just I think, remember you're wrong um, at the end of the day. And, you know, <laughs> and just, just come over to our side and we'll, we'll bring you back to your conservative roots. Or at least <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. I'm being funny. Go ahead. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Um, so, so yeah, but no, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, like I said, as a Christian, I'm definitely looking forward to more, um, uh, topics on, on Islam. Um, I because I'm very interested in like scholarship when it comes to Islam. I I speak to Muslims a lot, and um, for me, I I just like I try to be honest with what their religion teaches, and and I and of course I still come to different conclusions. I disagree with them. Um, I think Islam is something that people need to pay attention to. I think it's more than a religion; it's a political system, and I think that it could be a threat to society. That could be me just being absolutely religious, but I think that's an honest um, and not a far-fetched thing. And so the fact that it's being challenged critically and scholarly, um, I think that's very important. And um, I'm very glad that you do that and that you bring on the scholars. So um, like I said, I'm looking forward to more content. Um, and like I said, I'll even be continuing to watch some of the Christian content that you come out with. So Thank thanks you. again for having me on. Absolutely. One comment I would just say Christianity was used as a political tool to bring death and destruction and conversion in the past as well. And I know that so has Islam. I, I want us to be fair because I think a lot of stereotypical approaches to people who are Muslims or Christians uh, is there. I mean, even the way I hear some Muslims talk about Jews. You could tell there's a serious prejudice there built into the system. So I, I want us all to try to bridge that gap in some way and try not to view each other in such negative light. I hope everyone progresses. I hope everyone learns from the past and says, that didn't work out very well. I think, I think we need to try this. This is something that we should all do. Let's cherry pick. Let's Say, I like that. I don't like that. I'm going to follow this. I'm not going to follow this because it fits with how our society is working today in a positive way. And it has good repercussions. That's my whole goal with Myth Vision. Uh, one uh, open theist once said, Jesus was the greatest cherry picker of them all. I wouldn't say Jesus was. I would say Paul was. But but either way, because Paul right. really picked some, some texts to use them in his own way. Just, uh -huh. just keep going, man. And thanks for that positive feedback. Keep watching. And don't forget you're wrong at the end of the day, and I'm right, okay? <laughs> yeah, no problem. And I, and I actually agree. I, um, if, if any system, religious system, is uh, becoming any sort of threat to society, um, I, I, I just um, I think we should expose it and, and be able to speak about it. And whether no matter what religion that is, religion and state need to stay separate, and um, we do not need to put these things together. So I agree, man. If there's a Christian society that – um, is also trying to perpetuate themselves and mm -hmm. force themselves on other people. 
I, I agree. You know, we should be able to speak about that and, and uh, expose these sorts of. There are some Christian on. nationalists trying to do that in America. So just keep that in mind, my friend. There's all there's all sorts of stuff. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't worry, I'll leave sure. you another five star review next time you're delivering presents <laughs> or uh, packages. And uh, <laughs> yeah, never miss the liver. That's funny. What? Did, were you, are well, you uh, uh, every person or is that a joke? What happened? Is, is that how you did you actually like deliver something that's how you met or is this a, an inside joke that I, I don't get no i mean i was the first time i came on here i was in my mail truck delivering mail. oh okay i thought you were like <laughs> I was actually delivering stuff to derek and that's i was like that would have been kind of funny if that's how you, yeah yeah no i wouldn't make sure his paycheck got uh sent through the mail system again <laughs> <laughs> well thanks right, man. guys see you later it was uh nice talking to you guys as well or hearing you guys thoughts as far as our uh, friendly muslim uh, locker and um, uh, billionaire. So thanks, thanks man. I think I've seen you on a Signetter Studios, maybe, and and enjoyed your conversations over there. Is that you? No, I, I don't. You, I don't. Where no, else I don't have you called? I see you somewhere. I see you somewhere before. But yeah, good you to were see you. you were you were on last time I was on Derek's show. Oh, okay. Maybe that's where it is. Yeah, yeah good to see you again, is. man. Thanks, yeah, no brother. problem. You too. I like your outfit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's up. Bye. Take it easy, brother. All right, next super chat. Valesius, I hope I'm saying it right. Do Muslims see a difference between Iblis, Iblis and Shaitan? Seems like two different uh, forms of evilness conflated together. I don't know the answer to this question. Do you, yeah, friendly uh, Muslim? Yeah, yeah, they're different uh, uh, characteristics of uh, of the Shaitan and the Iblis, etc. So, yeah. Uh, there are two different forms of evilness. And all evil is evil, and shaitan is everywhere. So be careful, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny, funny, funny. Last night they were like, "You're gonna go to hell." <laughs> I'm just joking. No, yeah, they're not. Too they're not it joking. Was too it was too soon. <laughs> I know, but they're probably serious. Like, if you don't believe, you're gonna go to hell. And and no, it, it, part of the belief it, system, it, if you probably don't, after hearing. You know, if you if, if you, you make a college joke, just tell them it's a sweet burn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you, you, have, you haven't been revealed. Like you didn't go through everything and studied it, and you know, people. people what if I read it all and just didn't fun. understand it right? And then, am I still gonna be like, is there still a chance? No, because you, don't it. It. you didn't really get everything. You know, like you I'm haven't so gone through every single sign like i'm curious to know where that line is between now you had dude you knew enough to know okay and like you know what one more lesson and you would have finally you know you you didn't know enough don't worry man get on in here and get your 72 (laughs) virgins okay like (laughs) you know what i mean you might get that lucky brother you might get that lucky you might be that close And and you just get over the line and say, "All right, I'll give you a couple more extra credits." Come on, Derek, you're a good dude. I know you're can a little I, bit skeptic, but get on up. Can I ask for the because I, I know the seventy two version? I think is a hadith. I don't I don't know how authentic Muslims think that is, but like, are these seventy two virgins that are just made for heaven, or are these like women who are on earth who are now? I like how does that work, or is this just a stupid yeah? It's, it's a whole like t- th- there's some things that you just need to explain, like how it got there. But it, uh-huh. it became, it's not even a thing. There's no number, essentially. There's a hadith, whether, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you have to go through, like, with these hadith, right? People go onto, like, one website. Yeah, there are people that actually take the time to, sort of, you know, take 20 minutes to actually go through it. This is how it was. This is where it was mistranslated. This is where it comes from and explain it properly. So, yeah, the, the, so it's, it's, it's a whole thing, man. To be honest, I, I uh, just, Unless you're going to, to paradise, don't worry about it, bro. You'll uh, you'll you'll get your reward when you none, when you get it up there. It looks like none of us, but you will be there right now, dude. Unless if things I'm right, all of us will be there. So. No, no, I think I think <laughs> I, 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 if I was a betting man, you know, I'd say Derek's got a good shot. Uh, <laughs> the brother over here's got a good shot. Jay's got a good shot. I think I think you you might just get over the line. Derek right? Bennett just has no chance. He just Derek Bennett's screwed, man. He's the worst out of them. 
that that hat was the work of Satan. I'm telling Apostate you. prophet just is, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely going to hell, according to a lot of Muslims. And uh, David Wood, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Rob Atheist Scriptures IG. Much love, guys. Michael Shermer's The Believing Brain does a great job explaining how it is evolutionary benefit to assign agency to the unknown. 100%, Rob. I'm glad you brought this up. I loved that book. Um, I actually have him on your show. I have to interview him on that book. And we went into agency. We were like, what, like how superstitious are animals? And I I'm using that to categorize animals separate from humans, even though we're all the same. But my point is like, cause here we have like a literal scientist here. If you don't believe me, let him tell you, he will like, you're muted. You're muted, Jay. Oh no. I was talking to uh, one of my old basketball buddies came through my, came through my chat to flame me. You know how friends do. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. 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 Okay, good. But I was just pointing out like, we're all animals, but I wanted Absolutely. to separate them for a second because people don't, you know, especially religious beliefs typically say we're not animals. We have this uh, soul that animals don't have, and there's usually a mythology built into why. But at the end of the day, how superstitious are these animals? And that's saying humans aren't for a second, just just to get the point. And Shermer does shows the experiments and animals are extremely superstitious they're you know they're gonna tap that thing because they expect it to be a pebble of food to come through like whatever they they start to assume things and patterns start to happen and that's amazing they, they did it to humans and when they did it to humans <laughs> what made me laugh listening to the book was how much more humans were superstitious than animals oh. and it was like oh we are really like we are beyond in in terms of superstitious and having these patterns yeah. the animals themselves were. So we yeah. kind of went That's further. That's what I think too, right? Because a lot of things are sexual selection, right? So people are mus more muscular than they need to be. They're sexier than they need to be, right? And our brains are on sort of hyperdrive. And a lot of those ways are really useful. Like, oh, you can program a computer or, you know, build a rocket ship, right? But it's also built up in other ways. Like, oh, you can, you know, start a fake faith healing ministry and you could build an empire. And that's, that's one way to demonstrate your, you know, viability to mates or whatever, right? And so all of these things start to play into that system where there was the you know, the, what do we call them? The oracles. And there's all these, the shamans, right? There was all these roles for the hyper-religious. Um, I think even in my family, right? I come from like, you know, five generations of preachers. So we've been preachers all the way back to the plantation. So I think like, man, that's crazy. Wonder if we had some sort of weird stuff going on with us and then we could get along with Whitey a little bit. Maybe that helped us read a little bit earlier because they taught us how to, hey, help these Negroes read. They'll go teach the other slaves or whatever, right? But then maybe generations later, later I'm like benefiting from that, right? Somehow, right? Because there was some sort of house Negro uh, status that was <laughs> preferential. So there's all this type of stuff, right? Um, and so it doesn't sort of surprise me to think that the human brain may be demonstrated, we call it runaway sexual selection, right? But this, this trait has grossly outdone uh, wherever it would have been useful or helpful. And just for its own sake, it's it's run away. It's become it's it's on a runaway train where people are just becoming more and more religious because now it's being religious itself that's being rewarded rather than whatever was great about it to begin with. So that that makes a ton of sense to me. Also, I just want to say that this is why I don't think there's any such thing as a religion that's not harmful. Because there's always some of this reality denial in it somewhere. And the point about animals is awful, right? One, it creates that separation where people don't really recognize the problems of unnecessary animal suffering. Or I always talk about the Genesis story. So God thought um, man was so wicked, he wiped out all the living creatures. Well, what the hell did did the giraffes do to deserve that <laughs> you know well, right, right? two of them got to survive you know? yeah yeah you know, yeah two of them two he kept two of them or whatever right so so that's just awful um and then and then of course the separation right thinking that the just somebody telling you the reality hey you are in fact an animal well how dare you right and they think that you're telling them that they're scum and you're just telling them you know the the, the truth of the matter so it's it's really tragic Thank you so much for that. Sorry, I'm a preaching. I'm an evangelical evolutionist, right? 
Yeah, hey, look, everybody needs to go subscribe. I'm going to make sure I link it in the chat, too. So oh, I appreciate that. And, and don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to wrap things up here soon because it's 11 o'clock, almost 10 minutes till. And um, I know for a fact last night I was up way too late. Friendly Muslim, you got you guys got me in trouble. Um, my wife still isn't over it, okay? So – Let's Rob, get you out. Let's get you out of here. Yeah, yeah, guys, don't let me don't let me go down in flames again. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not. You're, plus, you're moving, and and she's she's probably yeah. You're on a, he's on a short <laughs> leash. Let's get him out of here. Get through these super chats. <laughs> I am okay. Jennifer, so, see, Jennifer's already on it. Jennifer knows. Or the wife, Jennifer. Lambert of God. I'm gonna go in there and tell her that that might give me some brownie <laughs> points. I don't know. Like fingers crossed, I get brownie points for this one. Jennifer, thank you so much. Always coming through. Uh, if it weren't for you, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd probably sleep in the doghouse tonight. So thank you so much. Paul Kickling's back. Harmony is proved in nature. It's singing and melody. This is the miracle you are looking for. This is the benevolent power. I'm cool with that. Actually, if you were to put me like, Derek, what do you believe in? It is existence. It is nature. Like, so if you have to, like, I saw a debate once where, um, who's the, the famous, guy who's constant everyone's talking about him um starts with a j he's, he's psychologist likes he, oh jordan peterson jordan peterson he debated someone and they're like can you live life without god or whatnot or is it easy oh it was it? um susan blackmore maybe? and she's like yes yeah. absolutely and then he goes absolutely not whatever you and the way he answered it was like whatever you aspire to whatever is your highest goal what your mental inclination or whatever that's god and that's what you worship well by those definitions then technically i worship nature and i worship existence and i worship other humans because i hide them i hold them at high high uh, importance in my life and so yeah, if that's how you want to define it and that nature singing this harmony because we find patterns in nature and things like that. Cool. I worship nature. Um, that's what you could put me as. Is it Un weird? Until that pattern becomes cancer. Sorry, go ahead. That's true. That's true. I don't worship that part of it. <laughs> it's weird that as a Christian, I, I kind of actually get annoyed with that. Like, I would rather you just say, yes, I'm an atheist. I believe in nat naturalism. That's it. Rather than like, I'm not saying this is you, but they're the spiritual but not religious people who believe. And I'm, I feel like that's even more annoying. I would rather you just be straight up like, yes, I don't believe in God. And be like, well, the universe gives it. It's just like, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, it's, it, it just seems like it's trying to have your cake. It's, I hate to, to put him on the spot, but it's, it's like when John Dominic Cross and he's like, well, do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus? Or do you believe in God? He's like, well... And then you go for five hours of what do you mean by this? Is it, <laughs> just say no. Like, I know you think you think the body of Jesus was eaten by dogs. Just say, I'd rather you just say that. Than you already well, know the conclusion. Does the resurrection mean to me? It's like, <laughs> you, know that, you know, that's not what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's Peterson almost like, does that too, by the way. Is it because you can't pigeonhole them that kind of irritates us too? It's like, come on, put me in a category. You, know you can disagree with Paul, but when he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no, I think he, that, that, <laughs> there is some wisdom there. Just Paul it. Kickling, thanks for that super chat again, my friend. I think we're all at uh, different um, observations of how we experience or what we're trying to conclude here. And I'm starting with a hardcore naturalist approach and i'm not saying i have all the answers i'm just going with what makes sense to me so i do appreciate that that doesn't mean i don't find beauty in all but just like jay said like what do we do with um the disease and the there's all sorts of stuff like and it's not like famine where you could kind of go okay there's people who are starving to death well we could solve that as humans but there's stuff happening the the common cold or diseases and viruses and things that you kind of go well like we if we did like somehow have a play in how these things came to be we didn't know how that even happened back then so it was incidental in how that may have occurred if if we had any involvement but the point is like that's stuff out of our hands that we really can't control i'm gonna try not to to uh do a whole stream of expletives i know you're a family man and you depend on your your uh your show here but uh if if god is somehow holding on to the cure for covid and just not uh giving it to us because somehow uh that it's going to increase his glory i've got some choice words for him when we finally meet mm. yeah thank you for respecting not saying it <laughs> you, i read your mind just now I'm glad you didn't say it. See, I have powers. People just don't even realize the kind of powers that I have. Troy Miller, thank you for the super chat. Worship the holy Derek for uh, of the far Washington. 
Troy, I will have a statue there. Um, if you're interested in coming and paying homage, my friend, but thank you so much for uh, the support. And then I think I had one more and then I want to have each of you plug your channel. I wish Derek didn't disappear. Oh, Paul Kickling said mysticism is trying to express the inexpressible. It's really ironic to say that it's running away from reality when it's actually what you are doing. He did the wrong. It's by the way, supposed to have a comma. I'm sorry, an apostrophe. It is. Just, oh, just, you, you grammar Nazi. You, I know that you have limited characters though. So I, I yeah. That. Um, well, Paul, if you think I'm running away from reality, so do Christians and so do, and I'm not saying every Christian, but so do lots of Christians, so do lots of Muslims, so do lots of Jews, so do lots of Hindus, so do a lot. Everybody probably thinks, they all probably think you're running away too, or that you got a piece of the pie, but you just don't have the whole thing. You just not realizing Vishnu is the name or, or Jesus is the name. You just don't realize that, Paul, you're not there. I don't know. I mean, but I think Paul might be getting at the. Uh, sorry, I don't. I can't see his name anymore. The. Paul King. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, getting at the side of what? I think he's getting at the maybe the Christian more so than you. Mysticism. With a comment go towards me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think? Yeah, he's, yeah, he, yeah. Because he, he said he doesn't. Even though, he doesn't even like though I'm religious and, and stuff like that, I, this just kind of comes off as like woo language. And I think the problem is that this is very hard to talk about in a super chat because you would need to, to have a dialogue or to have a very long passage, but you can't really do that with the finances. Right. So I feel like it's just when you only have one or two sentences, it's very hard to articulate. I thought Paul was talking to me, man. I'm just see know. that that, that makes it even harder when you can't tell because mm -hmm. it's like, it's not the best format to. To be introducing that, I don't know, Paul. If you want to, well, well, I'm looking for you Paul. On next time and, and express it. No, I'm looking to see if Paul, if he followed up, just write a regular one real quick, and then you're gonna let me go and save my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. in the meantime, Paul, while I wait, um, please do me a favor, everybody, and let's plug our channels. And um, I'm gonna pull them up. What's the name of your channel there, uh, Friendly Muslim? You don't have a YouTube channel, do you? That you I actually, mean, I, I, I do, on. yeah, yeah, but I'm not, yeah, I'm more uh, out and about, and uh, yeah, so okay. uh, yeah, but you can catch me at uh, EA Dawa or at Issa okay. Dawa tomorrow. I'll be with uh, Armin on his uh, show, Secular Jihadist. So, anybody wants to pop up, it's uh, 1 30 UK time, so I think that's five hours behind, so it'll be like 9 30 in the morning, US. Gotcha. So, uh, Derek, stop by if you want, bro. Excellent, excellent. All right, Caleb, what's your channel again? I'm well, so I that channel changed to Faith at Altered, but right now I'm just doing what he said, hopping on to different ones. So if you want to do channels that I've been on a lot, I would look at uh, Exploring Reality, which is uh, Than Christopolis. I've been on his channel a lot, so just just check that out instead. I think you have higher Reality. ratings, which yeah, Exploring Reality. Actually, I was trying to talk him into coming on your show sometime and debating someone like Jonathan Pierce, but if he he's he's considering it but he'd have to it'd have to be later on in the year because he's really busy right now so it's like yeah that, that could be fun Hold he, has, on. he has a couple thousand subscribers this is john what's his name um no not john no it's for exploring reality yeah um uh, let me show my screen so you can see what i'm looking at here look at the other one maybe i did pick the wrong one john steingard i think it was or whatever this no, is it's not oh that yo that's not him that's that's a video of him but that's not oh him, man. okay yeah, okay i'm thinking what no, the heck? yeah the guy in the as the, the other video that's is this the right one though yeah that's the right channel i just i don't know why that's on the thumbnail but that's not him. okay himself. all right so look i've been on several so if you, i don't know i've been on several of his videos so i would this is what i do man i don't care what you believe i, I you subbed go. i'm showing the example i'm, I'm hey, there you go well again hey, the light, you, you know you could get him on your show or you or vice versa to talk about some stuff i'm sure it'd be fun so okay. cool all right um jay it's your turn man listen i gotta give a special shout out because you do run your own channel number one all right number two you are uh what what's the term when someone is not known enough and they're just not appreciated enough burgeoning uh, okay. burgeoning hidden out under 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 watch just needs viewers right yep <laughs> yeah, pocket 86. locker 86 yeah yeah i really appreciate it really appreciate it all right can we get the 215 people watching in the chat right now please Yes, just just, just head on just, over. Just head on over. I'm live now. You can. Uh, I'm. I'll be working on a evolution education uh, tutorial video 
after this, and so you guys can head over. Uh, if people want to call in, you can call into my restream. And uh, Derek, I just wanted to quickly say, man, one of the, the 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 hot new controversies. If you guys want to stay up on the latest controversies in the atheist the atheist communities, the new one is which content creators like to help other channels grow and which ones hate that stuff. Uh, and Derek is definitely in the category of people who's out here actively trying to help us grow. So we oh, appreciate that. that. Thank you so much. Atheists had so much beef. I didn't oh, know. they they don't all like it. They don't yeah. all like it. But Derek's yeah, that's a true. huge help. Yeah, I accidentally. Uh, yeah, the other day I was on Pine Creek's channel actually, and I wanted to play a clip because he had a Christian talking about how they could prove the Trinity and he was using philosophy and whatnot. And I he uses like a some type of software it's different uh i don't know the name of it but i use stream we be we we be whereby whereby yeah, yes yeah. well yeah. he does it like if you tried to share your screen right now guys you couldn't share it yeah i would have to process it through i didn't know that's how it worked but i was excited i grabbed a video intro that i made on the trinity from james f mcgrath who's like a badass new testament scholar and just to show the new testament doesn't teach trinitarianism that is a doctrine that has – you have to call Evolved. the New Testament. You have to utilize text. You have to combine things. You have to make what we've called Trinitarianism based on the canon of Scripture. So if you see it as all sacred, and here it is, high Christology, oh, snap, God calls Jesus God in Hebrews, things like that. You start finding ways to – oh, he's baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You find ways to go, okay, I'm putting the Trinity together, and it becomes established. Well – it popped up automatically, and I'm the kind of guy that, like, if <laughs> if I was in a room and my pants fell down and you guys saw my junk, I'd kind of roll well? with it. I'd be like, wow, <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> well, really, I'm kind of like, but I'm going to roll with the punches. Well, I just roll with the punches and hit play, and um, I guess the next morning he was on um, – digital gnosis uh nathan's channel mm -hmm. right and, like they were talking and he somehow brought it up he thought it was a shameless plug like i purposely tried to manipulate to play it so that i got people to come subscribe because he had viewers watching and all of that and i'm like well first of all i am a shameless plug but i never <laughs> i really never intended to like upset you and it was not my goal to try and like ha, 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 ha. but i could get why he might think that but yeah he doesn't he's not a promoter he doesn't promote other channels it is about doug pine creek is about doug and his epistemological jabs towards those of faith and whereas i'm totally different myth vision sure uh but there's a reason the slogan even though i play a huge part of it is called we are, are. Myth vision. Myth is, oh, it is not I on am. Here. Oh, it's so good. Right. It's so not good. I am myth vision. It's we because I believe in the community. I believe that people together can accomplish some things. When 9-11 happened, we were as split as we are today. Once it occurred, look at how people came together. When you go down on the streets and see how people came together, creed, race, religion, color, all of that, sex, didn't matter. We came together. And I'm making the point, I think we can as humans come together if we don't go extinct before that so seriously yeah that's my whole purpose and goal I yeah i really appreciate cool. it thanks for the plug guys pocket locker 86 and uh definitely show your support guys uh derek come through or hit me up on whatsapp and we'll schedule something and you got to help me get ready to uh one actually engage with kent hoven but also to make the most of it right so that i'm not wasting the opportunity and and i get the most out of that so Good luck appreciate that. all your you, help i hope you win as a christian i hope you absolutely crush him so oh thanks i i, 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 I will when i go to bed tonight i will sleep knowing that there are christians rooting absolutely. for me and and i'll try to pull through as i've guys. told derek before it's like you know I, even as a universalist if i if being in heaven means I have to be with Kent Hovind for all of eternity, I think I might rather spend hell with Derek Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> if that's how it's going to be. But uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. Well, all right, let's get out of here. Let's say the line. Hey, we got to say the line. Absolutely. I say the like line. I said, like I said, go over right now. The live is going. There you Pocket go. Locker we're 86. over here. Hit the subscribe. Tell me how many subscribers you got when we're done, Jay. I want all you right. to let me know, man. Are you on social media? Yeah, yeah, Pocket Locker 86, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm finding you on Facebook because uh, I'm old school like that. We've got a Discord. Fet Life, Pocket Locker 86 on Fet Life. <laughs> wow, you got it all. <laughs> okay, hold up. 
You have <laughs> send a, me your kingster pics. Yeah, oh, go ahead. I found, you. I found you. Okay, hold up. That's not. That's a page. You don't yeah, have a, a page. You don't have like a personal profile. Yeah, I do too. Message. It's also Pocket Locker eighty six. So you can message me on Facebook. All right, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna have to. Dude, or Instagram. Yeah, Are you on Instagram? I am. I don't really use it much, but I can. Yeah, yeah. And then our WhatsApp is great too. I I, I check that. So. Well, WhatsApp. I got you connected there. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. Go. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Everybody go now. Go now. Go now. Before I the appreciate end. it. See you later. Seriously. Thank you, everybody. And never forget. <laughs> we, we are, are Mythfishing. Mythfishing. Mythfishing.